Hello friends. This is Muse Fanfictions. How are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto was the angel of the apocalypse. Here is short summary. Naruto wins at the valley of the end but is ran out of town where his life changes when he stumbles into a cave. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Chidori. Rasugan. The attacks of the two combatants meet at the center of a large waterfall, causing an implosion of power and destructive force. The only witnesses to the epic battle were the combatants themselves and the statures of the valley. We're almost home Teme, Naruto said. Sasuke was too tired to speak. They arrived at the gates, seeing a group of shinobi and villagers alike. Naruto put Sasuke down gently and saw Sakura. He was about to greet her when she pushed him out of the way. I told you to bring him back, not nearly kill him. But Sakura chan I, I don't want to hear it, she screamed. We have to get Sasuke kun to the hospital. Naruto just sighed as Sakura and a few shinobi carried Sasuke off to the hospital and was about to get up when a rock hit the side of his head. You demon. You hurt the Uchiha, demon brat. We should have killed you years ago. The villages started to hurl insults and rocks at Naruto who decided to get up and run out of the gates. Unfortunately, the villagers gave chase and surprisingly some were even able to keep up at least for a while, throwing rocks, kanais and whatever else they could throw. Naruto ran and ran, he didn't look back nor did he slow down even when he could no longer hear the villagers. He just kept running till the adrenaline and his stamina finally gave out. He stopped by a river and took a drink before dunking his head in. He sat there for moments but it seemed like forever especially with what just happened still running through his head. After bringing Sasuke back, after everything he's done, everything for the village, to prove he wasn't Kayubi, this is what happens. He gets run out of town just because Sasuke was covered in his blood, he was the one that took a Chidori through the chest. All to keep his promise to Sakura. Sakura, he whispered. I'm not going back. Naruto got up and explored the area he'd run into and noticed a cave which was mostly covered by a boulder. A well-placed Rasengan took care of that and he decided to walk in and explore it. As he got deeper, he noticed a skeleton on the floor with a full face mask, helmet which had a large forehead and chest armor but the lower ribs looked like they were ripped out or something busted through it. He pulled off the helmet and dropped it in shock, whatever the creature was it wasn't human but then again he'd recently seen a human with six arms and another that could use his bone as weapons so who's to say that this crab-faced thing wasn't human. Naruto continued to explore the cave, never noticing the shadow that silently followed him. As he got deeper, he noticed that the walls started changing from natural rock formations to metal with grids and glyphs on them as well as something hard and smooth that was neither metal nor rock in patterns that looked like bones. What's this? Naruto ran his hand over a bump on the wall and it lit up causing a loud hissing sound and a door to open in front of him. There was another loud hiss from behind and Naruto spun around in time to see a shadow with a long barbed tail jump towards him. What the he? It's been just over three years since the day Naruto was run out of the village and things weren't going well for the village hidden in the leaves. Just about a year and a half ago Iwa allied itself with Kiri, Kasa and Otto with the sole intention of destroying Konoha and its allies. When word first got out about what appeared to Naruto, Wave and Snow threatened to cut all ties and trade with Konoha unless Naruto returned and that those responsible were punished. Tsunade did not need any more motivation but was overruled by the council and the elders, whom did not bother about threats from lesser countries. It was only a year later when Sabaku no Gara became the Godem Case Cage and threatened to end its alliance and the rumors and scattered information of the possible alliance with Konoha's enemies that the council finally relented and the guilty villagers were finally punished. Many were heavily fined and or jailed, it turned out there were a few shinobi too who were either demoted or removed from the shinobi ranks and the ringleaders were fined and sentenced to lengthy prison sentences. It was little comfort though for those that cared for Naruto like the Konoha Eleven as they were called, especially a certain Hyuga and Sanin apprentice. Sakura walked through the corridor on the way to the Hokage's office. She'd let her hair grow out since and tied it up in nine ponytails, she never forgot the day Naruto left. Flashback no jutsu. Sakura paced outside the room that Tsunade was checking on Sasuke quickly blurted out. Is Sasuke-kun okay? Tsunade's expression grew cold as she spoke, 
I could not find any serious or life-threatening injuries. But he was covered in blood. It's not his blood and I have a damn good idea whose it is. Tsunade walked off not caring about the look of confusion on her face. Hokage's office. Kakashi, Sakura, Ino, Tenten, Gai, Hanada, Kuranai, Gara, Konkuro, Tamari, Shikamaru and Kiba were gathered in the Hokage's office. I thank all of you for coming. Tsunade started, about an hour ago Sasuke Uchiha was brought back by Naruto Uzumaki after attempting to leave the village to join Orochimaru. He is currently unconscious and under surveillance by a squad of Anbu, he is currently stable as he did not have any serious injuries. But I heard he was covered in blood, Ino asked. We checked him, the blood wasn't his, it was Naruto's. All the girls gasped. Pakun and I found more of Naruto's blood at the Valley of the End where we believe the fight took place. But, but, if Naruto-kun was hurt that ba badly, how did he make it back? Hanada asked. Sigh, by all accounts any normal person would be death. Everyone but Kakashi and Tsunade eyes widened. What I am about to tell you is an S-class secret which the Junins and older generation know but under the laws of the Sandame Hokage. None of the younger generation were to be told about it under penalty of death. The Yandaimi did not kill the Kayubi twelve years ago. No human can kill a demon instead he sealed it in a newborn baby, Naruto. All of the Konoha genin except Shikamaru gasped at the revaluation. You don't seem all that surprised, Shikamaru. Kakashi noted. Shino and I guessed as much. Having pieced together the clues like the dislike of the villagers, the names, his birth date, the beatings beatings jinchuriki power of human sacrifice are vessels and jailers of the biju and are pretty much treated the same universality either with hatred and loathing or are made into weapons kakashi explained like me everyone turned to gara we are viewed as nothing more than weapons and treat as such either with fear or hate that was why when i first met naruto i was surprised he wasn't like i was all the Konoha Nin shuddered thinking about Naruto being a bloodthirst killer like Gara was. We grew up in pretty much the exact same circumstances but he made friends and decided to acknowledge his existence by becoming Hokage instead of ending others' existence. He would protect them, even those that scorned him. Everyone was left with their own thoughts about the blonde, most re-evaluating what they thought of him. An Anbu suddenly appeared in the middle of the office, Hokage-sama. About 30 minutes ago after Sasuke Uchiha was taken to the hospital a mob was formed by some villagers and they ran Naruto Uzumaki out of the village. What? Why am I being told about this now? I'm sorry Hokage-sama, most of the Anbu were preoccupied. Have those involved arrested? Hi. The Anbu disappeared in a cloud. The rest of you. Kakashi, Ino, Tenten, will be on one team. Kurenai, Hanada and Kiba on another. Can I count on you three? Tsunade asked the sand siblings who nodded. Guy you're with them. Find Naruto. Go. The teams ran out of the office. What about us Tsunade-sama? The two of you will stay here and watch Sasuke and the other genin. Tsunade was about to walk out the door but stopped without turning around. That is what you would want isn't it, Sakura? She walked out the door not giving Sakura a chance to reply. Flashback Kai, Naruto. Sakura whispered as she clutched the papers she was carrying. She carried on walking to the Hokage's office and entered and noticed the Junin team leaders of the Konoha 11. I'm sorry. All, it's okay Sakura, we're almost done. Take a seat. Sakura nodded and did as instructed. As I was saying our scouts have reported that the two enemy camps at the border of Fire Country are totally empty and they do not seem to have been abandoned. What do you mean Hokage-sama? Asuma asked. There are signs of fighting at the camps but not as much as you would expect from wiping out a camp of hundreds of trained shinobi. Other than a few knocked over tents, loose kanai, shurikens and a relatively small amount of blood, there are hardly any clues as to what happened. It's almost as if everyone in that camp just vanished. This is most troubling. What are your orders Hokage-sama? I want Team Asuma to head to the camp east of Konoha and Team Kuranai to the west. See if you can find any clues as to what happened. The rest of you will be on stand by till further notice. Dismissed. The Junins got up to leave, nodding to Sakura. Konoha Gate. Azumo and Kotetsu were on guard duty as usual. Sigh. This is so boring. Azumo sighed. 
well we could always ask the Hokage for a tougher job or mission you know. Forget it. Hey guys. The duo looked over and noticed another Chunin with red hair tied in a ponytail and his Hatai ITE in a bandana, walking up to them. Yo Kenji. Kotetsu greeted. Anything interesting happened today? You're joking right, Kenji. Azumo answered, hardly anything ever happens in Konoha. Well you should still be on alert. We are at war you know? Kenji cautioned. Their conversation was interrupted by a loud scream for help and the sound of distressed footsteps running towards them. The three Chunin turned to see three Iwa Nin running towards them. What the hell? Azumo looked confused before the three of them seizing them just as they passed the gate. Please help US. You have to take US away from here. What's going on here? The Chunin and Iwa Shinobi turned to team Asuma standing a few meters away from them with Asuma in front of Ino, Shikamaru and Choji. The three Chunin brought the captured Iwa Nin towards the team while Kenji answered, we were talking when these three ran towards the gate. We caught them but they were hysterical. What are you three doing here? We were trying to get away, away from. From what? Him. The Nin pointed to the gate where a figure in a dark brown cloak landed, his voice sounded like he was facing the Shinigami himself. The figure stood up and walked towards the gathered ninja, his armored boots crashing the stones under them, a dagger attached to either leg, he on black shinobi pants with a pouch strapped to his right thigh and two round metal cylinders on his left. Over a chain mill shirt, his chest was covered in battle scarred gun metal gray armor, his shoulder guards and arms covered by his cloak which bored the whirlpool symbol encircled by an elongated lizard like creature with a crest on its head, biting its tail. The mask he worn was shadowed by his hood but you could clearly see that the mask, like the chest armor, had been through many battles though some marks looked intentional like a glyph made up of two strokes, forming a stylized T on the forehead and a pair of three scratch marks on either cheek. Who are you and what do you want? Asuma asked as the Chunin moved the captured Nin behind him and his team. I am a predator, a hunter if you will and those three, he pointed to the captured Iwa Nin, are my prey. Are you a hunter Nin or a bounty hunter maybe? We're willing to compensate you for these Nin, Asuma offered. I have no interest in money. Then I'm afraid we'll have to ask you to leave. We need any information that these nin might have and we outnumber you. HN. The predator smirked behind his mask and snapped his fingers. Loud rushing sounds were heard from the trees outside the gates followed quickly by loud clawing sounds scaling the outer walls. Six human-shaped figures appeared in top of the walls in crouching, squatting positions, they had elongated, cylindrical skulls but possess no visible eyes and had segmented, blade-tipped tails, the tails have a flat ridge of spines at the base of the blade. They crawled down the wall halfway before leaping down around the predator. What the hell are those things? Eno asked, the fear obvious on her face. Four of them with four dorsal tubes on their back stood up on their hind legs, warriors, ready to strike while the other two which had digitigrade hind legs and lacked the dorsal tubes of the others, runners, remained crouched, ready to strike. They have a skeletal appearance and were colored in muted shades of blackish bronze. Though they did not have eyes, the looks the creatures were giving the gathered ninja were enough to let them know that the creatures knew they were there. One of the runners spotted one of the Iwa shinobi and snarl at him causing him to wet himself much to disgust of the leaf chunin holding him. Give us our prey and we will leave. I had no intention of stepping foot in this village again for a long time. What did he mean again? Shikamaru thought. Asuma swallowed the lump in his throat that formed at seeing the strange creatures, I don't think so. We are at war with the country these shinobi are from and we have questions for them. I know of your war and it is none of my concern though those shinobi made good practice and stock. Asuma's cigarette fell out of his mouth when he realized what the stranger was implying. You were the one that wiped out those camps. Me and my angels. Before Asuma could say anything, three Anbu appeared. Bear stepped forward. The Hokage has ordered that these ninja be arrested and taken for interrogation. You can either take a bounty offered to you or we will arrest you as well. Before the predator answer, one of the Iwa Nin pushed Azumo out of the way, grabbing a kanai and charged the predator. The predator snapped his head towards the charging nin and three red dots in the form of a triangle flashed to life on his helmet. His shoulder plasma cluster sprung up through a specially made hole in his cloak and after a quick charge released a bright blue bolt with completely destroyed the ninja's head, shocking all present. 
TCH. What a waste. As I was saying, give us what's left of our prey. I will not ask again. I don't think so. Bear drew his sword along with his teammates Tiger and Falcon. Asuma drew his trench knives and the rest of his team got ready. The Anbu rushed forward and clashed with three warriors while the rest rushed the Chunin. For a moment neither one moved a muscle, then the Anbu and Asuma ran towards the hunter and angels which met them halfway. Choji and Shikamaru got in front of Ino, ninja art, mind transfer jutsu. Ino's body fell limp as one of the runners stood frozen to its spot. Ah! She suddenly woke up screaming in terror. Ino. Shikamaru kneed down and grabbed her shoulders trying calm her down, Ino, calm down. What's wrong? So, so dark, so cold, so so, easy Ino. The runner ran towards the trio ready to kill. Super expansion jutsu. Mega palm thrust. Choji quickly grew and crashed the runner to the ground but started to scream in pain, returned to normal size and started to rub his hands on the ground to try and dull the pain. Choji, what happened? Shikamaru reluctantly left Ino against the side of a building to check on Choji. He checked Choji's hands and noticed they were burnt and looked to the remains of the crashed runner and noticed the slight hissing and bubbling from the blood. Be careful. Their blood is highly acidic, he warned but it was too late as Falcon was able to slash the other runner and was unable to get out of the way off the spray which burnt her torso, arms and parts of her legs. Shit. Shikamaru cursed and quickly sent his shadow towards the warrior which decided to change target from Asuma to the downed falcon. He sighed when his shadow made it in time. Shikamaru turned the captured warrior towards Bear and made it tackle one of the other two warriors attacking him. The two warriors seemed to be talking to each other in high-pitched screeches and hisses before the captured warrior took a swipe at the other's head. Being unable to use the full capabilities of the captured warrior, it was quickly killed and torn apart. Shikamura noticed that they had no qualms about killing another one of their kind and their bodies were immune to the acid. Tiger disappeared as the warrior landed where he stood earlier. Earth style, inner decapitation jutsu. The warrior screamed as it was pulled underground it was much harder to pull it down than a human but eventually it was pulled under till only its head its head was left above ground. Tiger reappeared behind the trapped warrior and cut its head in half. Asuma jumped back to avoid a tail strike and threw one of his trench knives, it moved enough to avoid the blade but Asuma had channeled his chakra through the knife sharpening, lengthening and widening it enough to cut of the arm off the warrior, distracting it from avoiding the second knife through its head, silencing it. The last warrior and bear clashed into each other, bear used his left arm to push the warrior's head away just as its tongue shot out and stabbed it in the center of its chest with his sword. The warrior released a high-pitched scream before stabbing Bear through the back of his thigh with its tail before it fell dead on the ground as the Anbu withdrew his melting sword and dropped it as he fell to his knees, removing his melting right arm guard and cradled his arm. HMPH. You guys are as strong as I thought though I really did not expect that I would have to do this. The hunter sliced his palm with a kanai and quickly ran through the hand seals and slammed his palm on the ground, summoning Jutsu. Angels of the Apocalypse. Out of the smoke ten more warriors stepped forward and snarled at the gathered ninja. Oh crap. As if the first few weren't troublesome enough. I say again give us our prey and we will leave. Just then team Kakashi which consisted of Kakashi Hitaki, Sakura Haruno and Sasuke Uchiha appeared. What the hell's going on here? Ino. Sakura asked and ran to check on her petrified friend. Sakura get over here. I need you to heal Choji. Sakura quickly ran over to Choji and after a quick check started to heal him while Shikamaru went to check on Ino and protect her if necessary. What's going on here Asuma? Kakashi asked as he surveyed the scene. Three Iwa Nin ran into the village earlier and were caught by three Chunin in the area. Apparently they were running away from him. He motioned to the predator, and his summons, he calls them angels. He claims to be the one that wiped out those enemy camps but for some reason he won't give up those nin, no matter what. How strong is he? Honestly, no idea expect for shooting something from his shoulder which completely blew off that poor sap's head, he's left all the fighting to his summons. Hell he hasn't even moved from his spot. Kakashi nodded. You three guard the prisoners. The three chunin nodded and closed in their ranks. Asuma threw a pair of kanais with explosive tags to try and take down the warriors but they scattered as the tags exploded. 
One ran towards Sakura and Shoji but Sasuke got in between them. Fire style. Great fireball jutsu. The warrior tried to dodge the fireball but the fireball grew too large for it to dodge, causing it to be burned to death. Just as Sasuke breathed a sigh of relief, he was tackled to the ground from behind by two warriors and the tongue of one of them was driven into the ground just an inch from his head. I wouldn't move if I were you. The hunter warned as the tongue was slowly retracted, I'm willing to bet that their tongues are faster than you and spilling their blood over you is ill-advised. Damn. How did they get behind me? Sasuke thought trying to find a way out of his predicament. Sasuke. Sakura ran forward but stopped when one of the warriors squeezed Sasuke's head with its hand. Tiger jumped in front of Bear and Asuma jumped in front of Falcon. One warrior ran towards Kakashi while the others spilt up between the other two pairs. Tiger ducked under the claws of the first warrior and with an upward stroke, took its left arm off and just barely managed to avoid the tail strike aimed for his head. He used his slightly smoking sword to block the tongue strike by the other warrior only to get its tongue cut off for its attempt. The warrior screamed as its blood flowed heavily from its mouth. Tiger was about to finish the job off but had to jump back and avoid the spray of blood as it turned its head. It fell on its back dead, courtesy of a katana through the chest by bear. Fire style. Burning ash pile. Asuma released a cloud of ash which caught the two charging warriors who screamed in pain but one of them managed to roll out of the cloud before Asuma ignited the cloud, killing the one caught in the blast. Kakashi don't. Asuma yelled when he noticed Kakashi drawing a kanai and diagonally slashed across a warrior's chest, neck and face. The blood sprayed out of the wound and burnt his left arm. Kakashi hissed and threw his kanai into the side of the injured warrior's head but it was not enough to kill it. The warrior pulled the kanai out of its head and charged Kakashi. Kakashi threw three shuriken which were dodged, he tried to draw a kanai with his left hand but was unable to, he lifted up his hatai ite revealing his sharingan. Kakashi. Tiger threw his katana to Kakashi who grabbed it and in one fluid motion take a few quick slash at the injured warrior and the one that escaped the ash cloud and jumped out of the way towards the predator before the warriors fell to pieces on the ground. The hunter used his kanai to block the sword strike and jumped out of the way of a kick and threw his kanai at Kakashi. Cage Kanai Jutsu. A log replaced Kakashi at the last moment as a dozen kanai were about to hit him. A pair of jagged blades extended from his right gauntlet about a foot before extending another foot and swung down towards Kakashi who blocked with his sword but it broke from the force of the blow. Kakashi blocked out the pain and blazed through some hand seals, fire style, great fireball jutsu. The fireball cleared revealing nothing but scorched earth. Where is he? Kakashi thought as approached the spot where his opponent stood earlier. Just as he reached the spot, two eyes flashed yellow and before Kakashi could react he was hit by a right hook to the face and three more to the body before he was stabbed in his right thigh by the hunter's left wrist blades. Kakashi fell to his knees and felt a hand grabbed his neck as the predator decloaked in front of him and leaned towards Kakashi's ear and spoke just loud enough for the two of them to hear, normally, I might have had a harder time fighting you but not in your current condition and I'd have that checked, he motioned to Kakashi's arm, as soon as possible Kakashi, sensei. Kakashi felt his heart stop for a moment, Naruto? Normally, I might have had a harder time fighting you but not in your current condition and I'd have that checked as soon as possible Kakashi, sensei. Naruto. The hunter dropped the shocked Kakashi on his back and with a snap of his fingers a few drones ran out of their hiding places knocking down the chunins in surprise and grabbed the two surviving Iwa Nin before disappearing in a cloud of smoke and the bodies of the dead drones burst into flames. I'll be taking my leave now. The hunter's shadow rose and wrapped around him like a cocoon before sinking back into the ground and vanishing. What in the world? Hokage's office. The bandaged and healed team Asuma and Kakashi gathered in the Hokage's office waiting for Team Guy and Kurenai to arrive. Sakura was sitting next to a shivering Ino who was still a little unnerved having entered the runner's mind. Hokage-sama you wanted to see us? We were about to leave. Kurenai entered the office along with her team followed closely by Team Guy. Your current mission along with Team Asuma's is put on hold as we've received new information. Tsunade processed to inform everyone of the details of the fight that had taken place earlier and the Predator's supposed involvement in the enemy camps. We have to find out who this, Predator is. The Hokage thought out loud. It's Naruto. 
Kakashi deadpanned almost not believing what he just said himself. He called me Kakashi sensei. Everyone stared at Kakashi as if he was insane. Sigh. Troublesome. I believe it is Naruto given what Kakashi sensei has said and given some of the other clues like the scratch marks on the mask that look a lot like Naruto's whisker marks and the fact that he indicted that he has been in this village before. Also during his fight with Kakashi sensei I noticed he had blonde hair. There is no other logical conclusion but to believe that that predator is Naruto Uzumaki. No one could believe that the man that some of them saw earlier was Naruto and that he was supposed to be responsible for wiping out two large enemy camps. If it was Naruto, was he helping them since he did wipe out enemy camps but why would he attack them, Konoha, then? Do you think he will attack our village? Choji asked. He has no reason not to. Guy nodded grimly. It was this village that shunned and abused him and eventually threw him out for things that were out of his control. Here is your mission and it is an S rank mission. All the ninjas snap to attention. Team Guy, Team Asuma and Team Kuranai are to seek out this hunter and determine his intentions and if it is Naruto and see if you can persuade him to return. What about us Hokage-sama? Sakura asked. I think it's best that you three stay here. What? But Kakashi is one of the best trackers around and there's no way I'm giving up my chance on seeing the Dobi again. I know no one wants to hear this or at least bring it up but what if it is Naruto and he is our enemy? Shikamaru asked the question that no one wanted to bring up. Then you will have to do what you must. The Hokage answered sadly. Please Shiso. You have to let us go. Sakura, she looked sadly at her student, could you really bring yourself to, kill him if necessary? Sakura didn't even want to think about it, she just wanted her chance to apologize to Naruto. No but all of us might have a better chance of convincing him to come back. She gave Tsunade a determined look. Very well then. All four team will leave immediately. Kakashi will be overall in charge and assume a second. Dismissed. Tsunade and Shizune watched from the tower as the Konoha Eleven and their senseis headed towards the main gate. Was it a good idea to let the two of them go after him? You forgot that while those two were the last ones to start searching for him, they were the ones that searched the longest. Besides I think Sakura needs this more than any of them. Don't forget Hanada. Shizune joked. I just hope that he hears them out. Have you really changed that much, Gaki? Tsunade thought. Alright, Hiba, Akamaru see if you can pick up Naruto or those things sent. Hi. Kiba and Akamaru followed Kakashi's order and after a few minutes, stopped and faced the rest. We got their scent so are we going to follow it? For now but if it's a dead end I have another place we can search for clues. Let's go. The group jumped into the trees with Akamaru and Kiba leading the way till they stopped in a large clearing surrounded by trees. What's the matter Kiba? Lost the scent? Neji asked. No. The scent's all over the place but they seem to be branching off in those two directions. Hum. Do you guys think? Kakashi turned to the other Junin. I was thinking the same thing. This could be Naruto's staging area. Asuma took out a map and placed it on the ground. These are where the enemy camps are and this is where we are. It's almost the same distance from here between the two camps. Yes and this clearing is large enough for him to summon a large number of those things. Guy added and have his shadow clones lead them. Kakashi concluded. So what now sensei? Sasuke asked. We head to the first place that would welcome Naruto with open arms. Everyone gave him a confused look till Sakura understood, wave. You have got to be kidding me. Kiba yelled. Yash. Naruto-kun's flames of youth truly burns bright. Lee yelled. Hn. Sasuke smirked. The rest just stared at the great Naruto bridge. As they crossed the bridge the others asked Team Kakashi about the events that took place during their mission to Wave and what Naruto did. Oh you have got to be shitting me. Again. Everyone followed Kiba's eyes and saw what he was staring at and everyone's mouth hung open except Shino who raised an eyebrow. There in the center of the town square a few meters after the entrance of the bridge stood a bronze statue of Naruto in full predator gear and mask flanked by two of his angels. The group approached the statue and read the plaque dedicated to the masked hero who saved our country in our time of need. Look at the date. It was almost eight months ago, Tenton pointed out. Well if it isn't the ninja from the hidden leaf village, my how you've grown. 
The group turned towards the voice and the former Team 7 recognized the bridge builder, Tizuna but this time he was wearing a stylish kimono and flanked by two other armed men. Tizuna-san, it's so good to see you again. Sakura approached but was blocked by one of the men reaching for his sword. You will address the daimyo with respect, Leaf Nin. Now. Now. Narita, I'm sure she meant no disrespect. Daimyo? Tizuna smiled and scratched his cheek embarrassed. Well after you and Naruto saved us from Gatu, we decided to run the old feudal lord and they voted me to be the new feudal lord. Everyone stared in awe, it's not every day that you'd meet a feudal lord even if it is of a minor country or that you saved said lord before. Why don't you spend the night at my home? Tizuna offered. Tizuna and his guards led the leaf nin towards a familiar location, but when they got there, they were surprised to find that it was not the same humble building it used to be. It was now an elegant mansion whose exterior seemed to be made out of white marble. Tizuna led them into the hall and they took their seats at all the available places. Tizuna-sama, what can you tell us about the statue we saw earlier? Guy asked. He was a stranger that just appeared in our hour of need when Lobo, Gatu's successor for lack of a better term decided to try and take over Wave again. Why do you ask? We are searching for that man and we believe it is Naruto. The guards reached for the weapons, what do you want with Naruto-sama, Leaf Nin? Easy, Narita. You have to excuse them, Naruto is a national hero here and no one took what happened to Naruto kindly. Grandpa, I'm home. Everyone turned to see an older Inari walk into the room and look at the guests. I remember you, he pointed at Team Kakashi. Welcome home Inari. Your mother is still out and yes Inari these are the ninjas that were with Naruto last time and some of their comrades. I was about to tell them the story of our second hero who might actually be Naruto himself. Really? Yes, now sit down and let me tell our guests what happened that day. Flashback no jutsu, Lobo, surrounded by five of his personal guards dressed in samurai-styled armor and katanas led a large group of men were making their way across the bridge and were confronted by the villages led by Tazuna and Inari. Well well well. It's so nice of you to welcome your new master. One of Lobo's personal guards sliced the crossbow bolt shot by Inari and Lobo wasn't even phased. Get lost. The likes of you aren't welcome in wave, yelled Inari followed by supporting cheers from the villagers. HMPH. You miserable insects will learn your place. I have over a thousand men. You fools don't stand a chance. We will never give up. This bridge was named in honor of the person who taught us to fight for what we believe in and hold dear, so to your worst, Tazuna challenged. HN. Kill them. Lobo ordered and his men ran past him towards the gathered villages while his guards remained. A few arrows flew towards the men striking down a few of them but not enough to slow down the column of charging men, the villagers braced themselves to clash with the mercenaries. But a bright flash and loud high-pitched screech stopped everything and before anyone could recover, shouts of pain were heard from the mercenaries. The villagers looked up and noticed that a few of the gangsters had kanais and shurikens stuck in them but none of them were dead. Naruto appeared, decloaked, in all his armored and masked glory, so you're the scumbag that's trying to move into wave. Who the hell are you? A hunter. And you have a nice bounty on your head I aim to collect. Yeah right. As if one man can face this army, don't make me laugh. Kill them. I am not alone. Screams of terror were heard from the back of the column, behind Lobo. Those that turned around saw their comrades being pounced on by some drones before killing some while others disappeared in puffs of smoke. What the hell are those T? Ah! One of the thugs yelled before he was pulled over the side of the bridge. More drones climbed up the sides of the bridge pulling men over the sides, charged forward and disappearing in puffs of smoke or killing them where they stood. Some of the thugs managed to kill and wound some of the drones only to discover the dangers of their acid blood. Several men decided to charge Naruto, weapons ready. Naruto reached into his cloak and threw a bunch of kanais and shurikens, bringing down some of the men before they were captured by some drones. Naruto extended his wrist blades and charged forward slashing at their knees, ankle and arm tendons leaving them bleeding on the ground. He extended his right wrist blades further and with one swing sliced off the head and arm off a man before reversing the blades and with a backhand sliced another man's head in three. More men charged the young predator. 
These men were luckier than most of their comrades as they received a swift death. More were cut down by his shoulder cannon. Soon nothing was left but blood, gore and a small band of thugs around Lobo and his guards. Lobo for a lack of a better description was scared shitless, now I'm sure we can make a deal. The predator wiped the blood off his blades before retracting them and his shoulder cannon as he walked towards the group, all right, the one to bring me Lobo's head, lives. The thugs looked at each other before some of them charged Lobo but were cut down by Lobo's guards. The rest decided to take a chance tried to run away only to be caught by some drones hiding over the sides of the bridge. Two of the guards ran forward swords raised and brought them down but were blocked by Naruto's combi stick. He pushed them off before throwing a small sliver sphere on the ground which created a cloud of smoke. Cage Kanai no Jutsu. That was the last thing the two guards heard before being caught in a shower of Kanais. Four warriors attacked Lobo. One of the guards grabbed Lobo and jumped put of the way while one managed to cut off the arms and head of one of the warriors, avoiding the spray of blood but was caught by another and disappeared. The last guard stabbed one of the warriors in the chest before spinning around and cutting it in half. He jumped out of the way of another warrior's tail but was caught in a burst of wind from Naruto, cutting all his tendons. Lobo looked on in terror only to hear a sudden intake of breath and a spray of something warm behind him. He turned around and saw the predator had somehow gotten behind and stabbed his last line of protection with his spear. Please. We can talk about this. What do you want? Naruto walked over and picked Lobo's head off the floor and sealed it in a scroll. Who are you? Inari asked as he walked towards the hunter. You've grown strong Inari. The hunter disappeared in a whirlwind of leaves. Flashback Kai. So we made that statue in honor of the second hero of Wave but who knew it was Naruto all along. Ha ha ha. I have to have that plaque changed and announce it to the whole village. Tazuna proclaimed, he'll be an even bigger hero than before. Naruto Aniki's really gotten strong. Naruto-sama truly is great. And that was almost a year ago. Guy asked. Yes, it was a few weeks after I received word that Konoha had finally punished those responsible for running Naruto out of your village. Sometimes I wish he'd taken up our invitation of staying at Wave. Wait. You got in contact with Naruto. Not directly. When it was obvious that Konoha was not going to do anything about Naruto, messengers were sent out to try and find Naruto. Ads and posters were placed in every village we could. We were about to give up but six months after we started, I found a letter from Naruto. He thanked us for our offer and that he would visit some day. Kakashi sighed, there goes a possible lead. Anyway, why don't all of you keep your stuff in your rooms then we can meet for dinner in the dining area. Thank you. The group joined Tazuna, Inari and Tsunami in the dining room where they ate and traded stories before the family excused themselves for the night. I've been wondering, why is he so insistent on taking prisoners when he has no qualms about killing people? Shikamaru wondered. Hum, that's true. It is not likely for information considering that they were low-ranking members and it can't be for the bounty since most of the lower ranks will either not have bounties on them or have very small ones. Shino added. He even chased those three back to Konoha. If he just wanted to keep his existence a secret it would be better to kill the witnesses than capture them. Asuma lit a cigarette. Asuma sensei can you not smoke at the dinner table? Ino complained as she grabbed the cigarette and threw it out the window. Kuranai giggled at Asuma's sigh of defeat. I've also been wondering. Choji started, don't you think he was a little careless with his first group of angels? I mean he just stood there and let them do all the fighting though in the end they did take some of us out of the fight. Don't remind me. Ino groaned, I don't ever want to look into one of these things mind again. Hum. The most likely possibility is that he wanted to test us or did not think it was necessary. I doubt Naruto will be so uncaring as to throw away the lives of his summons needlessly. Kakashi offered. But I don't think this is the same Naruto we all knew before. Sasuke offered taking a sip of his tea. I think we can ask him that when we find him for now we have to think of other possible locations, what about snow? Sakura suggested. That's not a bad idea considering that other than Wave and Suna, Snow would welcome Naruto with open arms. But why not Suna? Lee asked. Though Suna has been our ally since the Sound War, they did not care about what happened to Naruto till Gara took over so it's most likely that he would have to set up his base elsewhere. Let's talk about his angels for a moment. Kuranai offered, 
I've never heard of any summons like the ones Naruto used. Have any of you? Everyone shook their heads having never heard or even read about such summons before. There is someone we can ask, and quickly summoned Pakun. Yo. Everyone greeted Pakun and started to describe the creature that Naruto used, hoping that he might be able to shed some light on them. I've never heard of such creatures before and mind you all summon creatures know about each other. We may not like each other but we do know about each other. This is troubling. We hardly have any information with can use to gauge Naruto's strengths and weakness except from what little we saw with Kakashi in the story Tazuna-sama told us, Asuma brought up. He seems to have weapons and skills at his disposal that I doubt any of us would expect him to have. He is Konoha's most hyperactive and unpredictable ninja, Kakashi pointed out. Still his kenjutsu skill sound quite impressive considering the stories of here. Admit it Tenten you just want to get your hands on a couple of his toys, Ino teased the blushing girl. What troubles me the most is his summons. Quick, silent, almost undetectable, acid for blood and tough. What are those things and if they're the lower ranking summons, what would a higher ranking one be like? The Konoha group gathered outside of Tazuna's home and bid him and his family farewell before heading off towards snow. Wait. Kiba stopped jumping and started to sniff around along with Akamaru. What is it Kiba? I thought I smelled one of those things just now. The group turned their attention to a barking Akamaru on the ground. Good work boy. This is definitely the scent of one of those things. The group quickly followed the duo while Hinata and Neji took turns using their Byakugan to conserve energy. The trail ends here. Kiba dug around the area where the scent ended and found a trap door and was about to open it but was stopped by Kakashi. Hold it. It could be booby trapped. Kakashi made a shadow clone and the group leap away and it opened the door. When they thought that it was safe they jumped down the trap door and turned on their torches and found that they were in a long corridor curved out of the rock and was wide enough for three people to walk side by side and just slightly taller than they were, not the best place to hide and sneak around. Thankfully as they traveled down the corridor there ended up in a circular room with several doors and made of metal with grids and glyphs and dark bone-like patterns. Kiba and Akamaru sniffed around a bit before turning to the group, it's no good the whole place smells of those things it's like this whole place is made out of em. Hum. If that's the case, Hanada, Neji activate your Byakugan and scout ahead, keep an eye out for those things. Shino send some of your bugs up front as well. Kiba can you at least pick up Naruto's scent? Kiba and Akamaru sniffed around a bit before turning to the group again, I think we got him. This way. They moved towards the center door and felt around before a panel lit up and door opened. The ninja jumped away from the door in case of any danger. When nothing happened Kiba was about to enter when he was stopped. Hold it. Guy held up his hand, is it clear? Neji scouted around and Shino sent in a few bugs. Someone's in there. Yeah I see him, he's sitting on a throne. It looks like he's thinking. Or waiting. It's been easy getting in here, too easy. Any sign of those creatures? Kakashi asked. No it looks clear. The group entered the room and kept their guard up. The room was smaller than the hall they were in earlier and it looked to be covered in the bone-like patterns and only the floor was metal compared to the hall which was a fair mix of both. I've been waiting for you. The hunter spoke not moving his head which rested on his hand. We're not here to fight unless we have to. Asuma spoke, stepping forward and showing that he was unarmed. Sending four teams, it's either you're weak and hope that numbers will make up for it or you're here for an all-out fight. Kiba looked ready to shout something but the predator continued, but seeing who she sent, it's most likely Ba Chan is hoping that you guys can talk to me without a fight, am I right? Naruto stood and pulled back his hood revealing his spiky blonde hair with two metal bands across the back of his head which held the mask in place. With a hiss the bands started to retract and fold to the sides of the mask. Naruto reached up and pulled off the mask revealing cool hard eyes and a somewhat grim expression. His whisker marks were slightly thicker and his face had none of the baby fat that it once held. Naruto. Sakura whispered, hardly believing that he was really there. Hey Dobi. Teme. Naruto smirked slightly. Naruto is that really you? Kakashi asked. In the flesh. Naruto-kun, we're here to talk and to try and bring you back to Konoha, Kurenai said. Do you see a forehead protector on me? What makes you think I want to go back? 
true but I don't see you wearing one with the village symbol slashed out which is the standard sign of missing Nin ending their loyalty to their village. Just give up and come with us, Naruto. We outnumber you and can take you down before you can summon those things, Kiba yelled. You dare challenge me in my own domain. Naruto snapped his fingers and the walls and ceilings started to move. One thought crossed everyone's minds, fuck. Naruto snapped his fingers and the walls and ceilings started to move and countless numbers of drones made their presence known. Even the passageway the Konoha Nin walked through earlier was completely blocked. One thought crossed everyone's minds, fuck. Kiba you idiot, Ino yelled before she started to look around frantically. I thought the two of you said the room was clear, Tenten yelled at Shino and Neji. It was clear I didn't see any movement or chakra. Neither did I, shit were surrounded. There must be hundreds of them. Choji yelled immediately regretting it when he noticed that Ino looked like she was going to have a heart attack on the spot. Troublesome. We're dead. They turned their head towards Sakura when they heard her pouch hit the ground, followed by her kanai and shuriken holder on her thigh then her gloves, she was completely unarmed. She started to walk towards Naruto till a warrior dropped in front of her and stood up to her eye level, extending its tongue. Though she was panicking and frightened out of her mind Sakura remained calm. If she was going to die today, she was at least going to tell Naruto how sorry she was. I'm sorry Naruto. She took a deep breath and closed her eyes, I know I don't deserve your forgiveness after everything that's happened and especially what I put you through. The warrior backed away as Naruto got off his throne and walked towards Sakura, not that she noticed. Naruto extended his right wrist blades and brought them up to her face and lightly ran them down the side of her face. I took for granted that you would always be there for me and I treated you like crap and I never realized till you were gone how important you were in my life. It hasn't been the same since you left and I've regretted every moment of it. She heard him extend his blade longer and rotated them. She prepared herself for death, I'm sorry Naruto. She felt her tears slide down her face. Sakura felt Naruto take a swing at her but for some reason she did not feel any pain, she opened her eyes and noticed that her hair had been cut and the ruminants lay on the floor while Naruto had his back to them, a lock of pink hair in his hand. I preferred your hair short. Naruto sat on his throne as the drones backed away and returned to their hiding places except for those that blocked the entrance. You get one more chance. What do you want? Naruto what happened to you? Kakashi asked. That is a long story, one for a later time and if it is information you want, it has a price. What are these things? Shikamaru asked. These are my angels of the apocalypse or more precisely beings from the stars or aliens. Everyone's eye widened at that but kept quiet hoping that Naruto would continue. This lair was a starship that crashed here hundreds maybe even a thousand years ago and with it my angels. Now answer me this, what are your orders? We were sent to see who you were and what are your intentions? Shikamaru answered, what are your intentions? Quite simple really, after building up my forces and skills I will make my present known to the rest of the shinobi nation probably by destroying one of the other hidden villages then see the reactions. I'm pretty sure there'll be some villages who'd welcome me as part of their village even if it's a small nation, they can be built up. And if that doesn't work. HN. I could always take over a village but I'm pretty sure Wave will accept me at least. That was too, my turn. Now that you know who I am and my intentions what are you going to do about it? Naruto, those responsible for what happened to you have been punished. Do you mean the council? Naruto interrupted Asuma, cause they are the ones really responsible. Encouraging the village's hatred and fear, protecting would be assassins as well as ordering their own. What do you mean? Tenten asked. I've had more assassination attempts on my life than all the cages in all the elemental nations combined. Isn't that right, Inu-san? He looked at Kakashi. Kakashi sighed wondering how Naruto knew his old Anbu codename. Yes within the first month of his birth Naruto Uzumaki had 127 attempts made on his life, most of which were stopped by my Anbu squad. The Konoha 11 and Kurenai stared in shock. Guy and Asuma were on some of the other Anbu squads that watched Naruto from time to time so they weren't surprised by the statistics. By the time Naruto made Genin, the assassination attempts had stopped but including the beatings from the mobs, the total number of assassination attempts stood at 1,786. The gasp from the women echoed throughout the room. Those were the ones that are known. It's a good thing that I'm immune to all but the deadliest poisons. 
Naruto will you come back to Konoha? Kakashi asked. 1. I am not the same Naruto you used to know. 2. Until the council members who have made my life a living hell and try to end it pay. I have no interest in dealing let alone joining Konoha but this can be a start. Naruto reached into his cloak, pulled out a book and threw it to Kakashi who caught it. Kakashi's eye widened as he flipped through the book, Naruto, is this? Kakashi what is it? Guy took the offered book and started to flip through it and raised his overgrowth eyebrows, a bingo book. Everyone rushed around and took turns flipping through the pages. There are members of Konoha's civilian council in there. Some Chunin and Junin too. Whoa. Even the elders and Donzo are listed. Asuma whistled, he has a large number of roots Anbu as well even we don't have sure in-depth information on them. As you can see I doubt Konoha will be so welcoming once copies of those are made available, the day after tomorrow. Naruto gave them a somewhat evil smile which unnerved everyone present. Naruto is this really necessary? Kurenai asked. Yes it is. You see everyone in that book has either made, ordered an attempt on my life, made it a living hell or are just plain corrupt. But Naruto this is almost equal to a declaration of war, Shikamaru warned. Is this a problem? The smile Naruto gave this time was outright terrifying. The way I see it if Konoha wins the war it's in, it wouldn't be able on put up much of a fight when I go after those people and depending on who's left either I or they will decide Konoha's fate or I could leave it to its own devices. No one could believe what Naruto was saying. But you wiped out those enemy camps, aren't you on our side? Choji asked. Naruto chuckled a little before getting up and walked towards the side of the room and opened a door, come with me if you dare. They followed Naruto through a series of short corridors before stopping in front of a gigantic and heavily fortified door which opened with a series of hisses and metal rods moving out of the way and entered behind him. They looked up at the nightmare in front of them, she was enormous, standing anywhere from 20 to 30 feet high anchored to the wall by her egg birthing sack. She was around 50 to 70 feet long from her arrow-headed tail to the end of her wide-crested head. She was midnight black in color, her exoskeleton a darker shade and hue as that of her children. She had enormous, taloned feet that gave her upright walking movement, but lay tucked underneath herself near her egg sac, was an enormous, yellow liquid-filled tubular protrusion that housed her species developing eggs before she laid them and they hatched. She had two pairs of arms two of them jutting out from massive shoulders and heavily muscled with multiple clawed digits, while her other arms had only a few fingers, and were much smaller and frail looking, jutting out from her chest. Her head was sleek and oblong, like that of her children's, but she had an enormous, fan-like crest that jutted out and merged itself along her skull, her curved mouth slightly reminiscent of a smile. Oh. My. God. Both Sakura and Ino backed up while Hinata hid behind Shino and Kiba along with Akamaru. The Junin swallowed the lumps in their throat and watched as Naruto approached the monstrosity before them and stroked the side of the queen's head affectionately. This is the queen. She is the most important part of the hive as I'm sure you would understand Shino. Their species have slight psychic abilities, a mind link to one another and she used this to control and communicate with her brood from any distance, from several feet to the other side of the planet. It is through this mind link that I communicate with them. But Naruto how do you control them? The queen turned to look at Tenten who quickly hid behind a stiff as a board lee. That would be thanks to my tenant. Flashback no jutsu. Naruto spun around in time to see a shadow with a long barbed tail jump towards him. What the he? Naruto jumped out of the way as runner landed where he stood earlier and rolled out of the way of the tail strike aimed for his leg. He quickly ran through the door that he had just opened but stopped in his tracks when he saw the queen. But remembering the runner that was behind him, he quickly created a dozen shadow clones and charged the runner. Most were dispelled by a single tail strike. Rasengan. He drove the sphere right into the chest of the runner killing it instantly but his entire arm was caught in an acid shower. Naruto stood up and noticed the queen slowly raising her head and hiss at Naruto as three runners and four warriors appeared around Naruto. Oh yeah. I'm not going down without a fight. Believe it. Naruto raised his injured but healing arm and created a dozen shadow clones and charged the drones. Stop. What? Kayubi. Hold it, Kit. Don't attack those things. What? They're the ones attacking. What the hell are they anyway? Surprisingly none of the drones made a move to attack him or his clones. 
Those are beings from beyond the stars, huh? They're not from this planet. Aliens but once many eons ago they were a plague that caused the death of many worlds, only we the Biju were witness to the death and destruction caused by these things. They're aliens? Yes and like I said eons ago they caused the death of many worlds, like an intergalactic plague, destroying world after world. Whoa. Do you see their potential, Kit? Actually you lost me at aliens. You are dumber than a fucking fence post. What part of that was so hard to understand? They are aliens. They destroy everything. Ooh. Why didn't you just say so? Naruto could have sworn he heard Kayubi mumbling something that sounded like, moron, or, stupid container. Okay. New question. Why aren't they attacking? Because they can sense me in you. When these things first came to this planet, the Biju were already around. They tried to wipe us out as well but being demons made that impossible and they're smart enough to learn from experience. Dispel your clones. Naruto dispelled his clones and surprisingly the drones backed off and lowered themselves into non-aggressive stances and even looked like they were bowing to him as he approached the queen. He stared at the queen silently for a moment before a look of understanding and surprise appeared on his face, I can understand her and they're willing to follow my lead as long as I ensure the survival of the hive. Yes and I have just the solution make this work in everyone's favor. How? We're making a new summoning contract. Flashback Kai. And so with Kayubi's knowledge and the queen's support we created a summoning contract that allows me to summon them to do my bidding. You, you spoke to the Kayubi. Asuma could not believe what he was hearing and reached for his cigarette and lighter. The queen hissed when Asuma lit his lighter but it was so soft that a normal person would miss it. Ino reached over and grabbed his lighter. Asuma sensei is this really the time to be smoking? Though it really wasn't a question. Troublesome. Asuma sighed. You get used to the troublesome furball after a while. He was my main teacher since I left the village. I love you too, Kit. And it's, is, you still have a lot to learn. How do you know you can trust Kayubi? Guy asked. I'm still alive aren't I? And as for why he attacked Konoha, well in due time. But Naruto how did you create a summoning contract and wouldn't the queen be the boss summon? And if she is, how is she supposed to face off against other boss summons? Sakura asked. I won't bore you with the detail or tell you everything but the summoning contract we created isn't the same as say the toad contract I signed, it just allows me to bring any number of my angels as needed to my location. And what they lack in size, they more than make up for in numbers, ferocity and fearlessness. But Naruto if she's the queen and so important to the hive, why is she unguarded? Kurinai asked. You thought I was unguarded as well didn't you? Naruto could hardly keep the smirk off his face when the group started looking around trying to spot the guards. You may meet the guards another time. They really are quite a sight. They followed him out of the room, not being able to totally shake the feeling of the underlining threat in his previous statement, and continued down a short corridor. Naruto aren't the guards the same as the two kinds we've already seen? Shikamaru asked. Two kinds? Tenten and Sakura asked. Yes the first batch we fought before Team Kakashi arrived had two types, one kind stood up right and had those tube or spike things on their back and another lacked the spikes and stayed on all fours like a dog. As perceptive and clever as ever Shikamaru. Yes there are two kinds of drones, the upright ones are warriors, they are the foot soldiers of the species they can even learn some taijutsu and though physically weaker than the warriors the runners make up for it with great speed and other abilities and the queen's guards? Shino asked really interested because of the similarities between the aliens and some insects. The Praetorians. That's a secret. He gave them a foxy grin before continuing. Naruto stopped in front of another door and turned to face the group, this is the birthing chamber. Before we enter, I must warn you what you will see inside will be very disturbing and you will see why I said I am not the same Naruto you once knew and to give you an idea of why I took so many prisoners. But aren't your angels born from those eggs we saw earlier in the queen's chamber? Not quite. They are the start of the life cycle but they need hosts. Before they could ask him what he meant he opened the door and walked in. The screams of pain, horror and the stench of blood and death should have been the first signs that they should not enter that room but they had to know what was going on so they entered. So they enter and were greeted by a scene out of a horror movie. Bodies were held to the walls by what looked like solidified webbing. Some were dead the holes in their chest being the most obvious sign, 
Some had spider-like creatures attached to their faces and many of the same spider-like creatures laid dead on the floor near opened eggs. Some warriors were removing the dead from the walls and throwing them down a large pit whilst the dead face huggers and empty eggs into another. One of those that were still alive gasped and looked at the Konoha Nin, it was one of the Iwa Nin that was taken from the village. Place, please, kill me. Ah! His screams of pain were accompanied by howls of pain from two dogs that were held down by the same webbing. The chest buster broke through the chest of the Iwa Nin, its scream announcing its violent birth as the wolves literally blew apart as the newborn runners stood up on shaky walks in a sea of blood. Hanada fainted at the sight, no one caught her as they were too stunned and horrified by the scene before them to move except Kiba and Shoji who ran out of the room, fell on their hands and knees and vomited. Naruto walked up to the dead Iwa Nin and allowed the newborn chest buster snake around his arm, natural born killers, they live only to serve the hive and survive, ruthless, fearless, no sense of guilt or remorse even their birth is marked by death and blood, they are the perfect weapons. Ino, Tenten and Lee quickly joined Kiba and Choji outside while Shikamaru kneed down feeling nauseous himself and Neji picked Hanada up and carried her out accompanied by Kurenai. Naruto approached the group as all the newborns scurried into specially made tunnels which will lead them into many different chambers where they can remain safe till they reach maturity. Naruto walked past the nauseous ninjas as a whimpering Akamaru backed away, I'm feeling a little hungry I think it's time for lunch. You're sick man. Kiba wheezed out. I think I lost my appetite. Choji said as he tried to get to his feet. That was the most awful thing I have ever seen. What happened to Naruto's youthfulness? Lee spoke in the softest voice anyone had ever heard from him. Those things aren't angels, they're monsters. Tenten nodded in agreement with Ino's statement and reached for a bottle of water. He's not the same Naruto we all knew last time. Kuranai checked on Hanada before moving to check on the others. Do we really want him back in Konoha? Better to have him with us than against us. Asuma pulled out his cigarettes and spare lighter. This time no one stopped him from lighting up even Kuranai and Guy took one. I have never seen anything so disturbing before. Guy took a long puff, but I agree with Asuma. Better to have Naruto on our side than against us. This Naruto may be darker than the one we used to know but I believe essentially he is still the same Naruto with all new back then. Kakashi stated as he watched the door to birthing chamber close. I hope you're right, Kakashi sensei. Sakura watched as Naruto disappeared around a corner. Regrading the dark horse. Angels of the Apocalypse if I remember correctly it was about a group of scientists who discovered a space jockey and trying to learn its history technology while another scientist discovered that the Xenos were an intergalactic plague that at one time wiped out all life in the universe including the dinosaurs and is, infecting, volunteers and other people to try and find a where to stop the next wave. I can remember the ending but in the end the space jockey was impregnated and a gained Xeno was born that could hold a regular Xeno in its hand and crash it. Oh and I forgot to address this the last chapter but there will be no slash, yaoi though both my betas are yaoi fangirls. As for filler girls. We'll have to see I guess, got to watch a couple of those. The Konoha Nin sat around the large dining table nervously, all not forgetting the horrifying scenes they had witnessed earlier. Unlike the other parts of the lair, the dining room was wonderfully designed with black marble floors and walls. None of the metal glyphs and grids from before but the four corner pillars had the same bone-like patterns that were in the throne room which they suspected were actually the aliens hiding in plain sight. How did Naruto get all this here without anyone knowing where he hid? Ino asked. The same way I do everything else. Naruto walked through some double doors and was quickly followed by a dozen clones dressed like waiters placing food on the table and a large bowl of ramen on table for him. Not quite Ichiraku's but it will do. Naruto started to wolf down his ramen like everyone remembered and had finished his first bowl when he noticed that no one was eating even Choji, what? The food not to your liking. No, it's not that. It's, it's not poisoned. Naruto interrupted Kurenai, if I wanted you dead, I would have left you in the birthing chamber. Naruto stated causally as another bowl was placed in front of him. Everyone paled thinking about the birthing chamber. It was the main reason why no one had any appetite but Choji being a typical Akamichi was the first to get his back and tried some of the pork and beef dishes in front of him, before quickly piling the food on his bowl. It's good. 
Everyone started to try the food and were pleasantly surprised at how good the food was and started to take more as the clones refilled their dishes and drinks. I surprised you have such a room, Naruto. Neji spoke. Well you can't really entertain guests in my throne room much now can you? Especially if you want to work with them properly. Naruto answered, finishing his fourth bowl of ramen. Does that mean you'll consider coming back to Konoha with us and rejoining our ranks? Asuma asked hopefully. It's not likely but I can promise you that at least till the end of your current conflict, I will show no more hostels towards Konoha even if a few strays run your way. The Nin sighed in disappointment though they are still troubled by what they've seen they would still prefer Naruto and his forces be on their side rather than against them though Kiba and Akamaru were a little more apprehensive than the others. Naruto, were all the prisoners, were they? I mean, Ino did not know how to phrase what she wanted to ask. Yes, those that were taken alive were all used to breed new drones. So for every human you've captured, you're able to create another drone, Shino stated. More or less. Shino and Shikamaru raised an eyebrow, as you saw, it's not just humans that can be hosts though dogs, wolves, large cats and most other four-legged predator will give rise to runners while almost everything else will spawn warriors. Those that did the math were shocked at the possible number of drones Naruto had at his disposal and those were assuming he did not have any more surprises or taken more people without them knowing. Still the possibility of even a few hundred maybe even a thousand of those thing was a scenario that none of them wanted to face. Did it have to be dogs? Kiba mumbled to himself. Don't worry Kiba I won't use Akamaru. But still those things are monsters, Kiba yelled. Maybe so by most people's standards but that is the way they are, they are what they are by nature, not by choice, and since I've taken control, no innocent child or person has played host to them so I would think very carefully before speaking especially if you're going to make comparisons between my angels and myself with say, Orochimaru. Everyone thought about what Naruto said. If it was true about the history of these creatures, the only thing stand between the human race and a potential wave of extinction is Naruto. Naruto-kun really hasn't changed, he's still so strong and protecting everyone. Hinata thought as a blush crept across her face. Sorry, Kiba mumbled. Apology accepted. Naruto smiled, it was a sight that everyone had missed seeing. By the way Naruto, who prepared all this? Sakura asked hoping that a change in topic will lighten the mood. I did. Naruto answered matter-of-factly. Really? How? Ino like the rest could hardly believe that the ramen addict that they all knew could prepare something that wasn't ramen and make it good. I used shadow clones to learn different skills during my time away from the village as well as train so I was able to pick up a variety of skills to make my life more comfortable and one of them was cooking. The conversation around the table mainly centered around what Naruto had been doing and what he's learned especially his shinobi skills and from Kayubi. Though he was fairly elusive and vague with some points. I'll have one of my clones bring you to your rooms afterwards. This shall be your quarters for the duration of your stay. Naruto opened the door to a spacious well-furnished hall that had two doors on either side leading to bedrooms and another on the right which led to an additional bathroom. These rooms are nice. Ino looked around a room, could use some windows with a view though. I give you my word, no face hugger or any of my angels will enter your rooms unless necessary. The clone promised before dispelling itself. The Konoha Nin gathered in the adjoining hall and started to discuss their current situation and what actions they were going to do. What do you think he meant by face hugger? Ino asked. I believe he was referring to those things from the eggs that impregnate the host for those creatures. Shino suggested. Yes those things are small enough to move through the air vents in our rooms. Guy pointed out. Then, then, what are we going to do? Ino panicked and looked for any vents that could be used as an entrance point. I think we can booby trap them to alert us if anything comes through but I trust Naruto. Kakashi suggested. Tenten, Sasuke, you two secure all the vents. Everyone else check the room for any listening devices and anything else that may pose a risk. Everyone did as instructed and after a while felt that they were safe for now and gathered back in the hall. I think we need to convince Naruto to either delay the publishing of his bingo book or stop its spread altogether. What can we do short of trying to steal it? Neji asked. I'm thinking that we might have to offer him something, Kakashi suggested. But what? I'll have to think about it. Anyway what do we know about these creatures so far? 
There are aliens that use humans and other mammals for hosts. They are fast, strong, stealthy and nature killers. Their chakra networks can't be seen or detected by the Byakugan. They have an insect-like social structure with the queen as the egg layer and Naruto as their ruler. They have different castes. The drones that come in two forms, a royal guard caste that we have not seen and the queen. I think those things are afraid or at least don't like fire. Everyone turned to Shikamaru. I think some of you noticed the way the queen hissed at Asuma Sensei when he wanted to light up in her chamber. The Junin nodded. So if we fight those things again we should try to use more fire jutsus? Sasuke suggested. I think that's a good suggestion but there are only a few of us here that can use fire jutsus well enough. Guy pointed out. I believe the Hokage would prefer a diplomatic solution rather than a confrontation. Everyone kept quiet and gave Shino their full attention. Because of the high probability that the hunter was Naruto, she sent us to talk with him and even if it was not Naruto she would most likely want us to gather information considering our skills. And in case of a confrontation it would be prudent that we retreat since most of us are close to mid-range fighters and those creatures have the advantage in a hand-to-hand -hand situation. Everyone could see the logic in Shino's assessment but then again Shino is an Abarame. There was something else I noticed in the birthing chamber. Everyone turned their attention to Shikamaru, there were no women in there. So? If those things can be born from humans why would there only be males in there? Maybe they can't use females. Eno suggested sounding hopeful. I doubt that. Those creatures remind me a lot of my own insects and as far as I know hosts for parasitic lifeforms are not limited by gender. Shino pointed out. But if that's the case then what does he use them for? Sasuke wondered. I know what I would do if I had all those kunoichis at my disposal. Kiba had a perverted look on his face and a drop of blood appeared from his nose. Hentai. The Kunoichis excluding Hanada showed Kiba what they thought about his idea. I doubt Naruto would do something like that. Kakashi defeated Naruto. True but what does he do with the women then? Asuma wondered. Naruto leaned on a railing overseeing the training area where about 50 of his clones were training with some warriors in Taijutsu and others were doing different chakra control exercises. You know who my father is, don't you Kakashi sensei? He spoke without turning around. I haven't been your sensei for a while now Naruto and even back then I wasn't a good one was I? Maybe a little after all, you spent most of your time training Sasuke. I know and I was wondering if you'd give me another chance to try and make it up to you? And what's the catch? Originally there wasn't one but the other Junin want to head back tomorrow and inform the Hokage about your bingo book. I was hoping that you'll hold it off for a week while we train and let some of them head back to Konoha. Fair enough but they will not be allowed to leave till three days after we start training. Naruto held out his hand. Deal. Kakashi shook Naruto's hand. You know, Kakashi sensei you didn't answer my question. Kakashi just smiled and held up a Rasengan while Naruto smirked and held up a perfect one-handed Rasengan as well. I'm staying behind to train Naruto. Kakashi declared much to the surprise of everyone present as he entered the hall. Kakashi. I know you want to make it up to Naruto for your supposed mistakes but we should be reporting back to the Hokage," Asuma countered. I know but hear me out. I managed to convince Naruto to at least delay the release date by at least a week. I might be able to extend it, in exchange for this training but you guys can't leave for Konoha for three days," Kakashi explained. So if I can get him to trust me some more it might be easier to get him to come back with us. And before anyone says otherwise, I'm not just doing this for Konoha's sake, it's for mine and Naruto's. But still should you really stay here, Kakashi? It will buy you some time to get back to the village before the bingo book gets out. If that's the case then I'm staying as well. Sakura spoke up and gave everyone a determined look. Guess I'm staying too. Can't leave you and Kakashi sensei alone with the dobi. Air. Guy sensei I'd like to stay behind as well. Tenten raised her hand. Anyo, so would I, Hanada spoke up. If Hanada sama is staying then I will remain as well. Neji's voice left no room for argument. Sigh. I might as well stay behind as well to watch over the girls and back Kakashi up when he's with Naruto. Kakashi and the other Junin nodded, it's settled then. The rest of you will make preparations to leave in three days while we stay back and try to either gather more information and or earn Naruto's trust. Kakashi and Naruto stood in the middle of a large clearing. 
none of the other Konoha Nin were with them. Tell me Naruto, what do you know about elemental chakra? Enough I guess. Do you know what your affinity is? My main affinity is wind. Main affinity. So you have more than one. What are they? For me to know and for you to find out. Fair enough. Kakashi held up a Rasengan, the Rasengan created by the fourth Hokage, rank A assassination jutsu but what most people don't know is that it is also an incomplete jutsu. Naruto looked surprised at the fact that the Rasengan was incomplete. Aero Senen never mentioned that. Your father wanted to add his elemental affinity to Rasengan but the Kyubi attacked before he could do so, so it is up to you to complete your father's work. Naruto nodded. Normally, creating a new technique of such a high level will take years but since you know the secret of the Shadow Clones and with your chakra reserves, you should be able to finish it even sooner. Alright let's get started. Create as many Shadow Clones as you can without draining yourself too much, you still need enough chakra to create a Rasengan. Yosh. Taju Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. At least a thousand Naruto's phased into existence. Kakashi looked around. No matter how many times I see this, I'm still amazed at the sheer number of them. Alright. Let's get started guys. The original ordered and everyone started to form a Rasengan in their hand. Yes that's right and there's a sealed door here and here an event that goes from here to here. Neji pointed out as Asuma added the details to the map they were drawing. Lee and Shino entered the room, followed shortly by Hanada and Ino and they too added what they've learned. Yo Kakashi. Guy greeted as said Junin entered the room. How was the training with Naruto-kun? He's made little progress but that is to be expected. What are you teaching him anyway? He is trying to complete the Rasengan. Complete the Rasengan? Asuma's voice matched the stunned expression of everyone present. Yes the Rasengan as powerful as it is now is actually incomplete. The fourth did not have a chance to add his elemental affinity to it. That is what I'm having Naruto do. But creating a technique of that level can take years, Kurenai pointed out. Yes but with shadow clones he can cut the time down and the fact that he already knows some elemental jutsus will make it even faster. But still how many shadow clones can he make and still create a Rasengan each? Sakura asked. I counted at least a thousand earlier so I have little doubt that he will complete it in less time. But still, should you really be helping him gain such a powerful technique? Kurenai asked. It's his right. Some wanted to ask what he meant but he continued, how have you been while I was gone? We've set about trying to map out as much of this compound as we can, no one moves in anything less than pairs and so far this is a fairly large compound bigger than the Hyuga compound at least. Asuma reported. What about guards and restricted areas? He's let us wander around quite freely though there are a few areas that we can't get access to and some of the tunnels are either too small or too numerous to map. Neji showed the map that they had made. Should we really be doing this? Sakura voiced out, he is showing us an awful lot of trust by letting us wander around as freely as he does. Should we be taking advantage of that like we are? Sakura's right. I hate to think that we may have to fight Naruto someday. What? Everyone gave Sasuke a look that said, you're kidding right? Okay fine. The point is we're trying to get him on our side, also think about it. Most of this place has the same bone-like designs that were in the throne room, who's to say that every square foot of this place that has those designs isn't crawling with those things. Everyone paled at the thought but it would make sense, their rooms did not have any of those designs and that would mean that Naruto would most likely know what they were doing since those things would report back to him. Regardless, I think we need to gather whatever information we can. Hopefully, it's a precaution we'll never need. That night Naruto returned to the clearing and created almost double the number of clones he created earlier. You all know what to do. Yosh. Half the clones shunch an ed away from the clearing while the rest continued what they were doing earlier in the day. We should thank that sensei of yours, if he did not tell us that little tidbit about the Rasengan we would never have thought about the improvements we're making now. Yes we should. I'll think of a way later. For now let's make sure you perfect your new techniques. I'd like you to hand this to the Hokage personally, no one else is allowed to read it before her. Naruto handed Asuma a scroll which he accepted. I promise Naruto. It's been three days since Naruto had started his training with Kakashi so as agreed the Konoha Nin were gathered outside one of the many small tunnels that radiated out from the hive. Well we're off then. 
I'd wish you a safe journey but I think we better take care of unwelcomed company first. Naruto answered their confused looks by firing a couple of plasma bolts at some trees which forced six hunter nin to jump out of the trees. How did you know we were there? We covered our scent and suppressed our chakra. The hunter nin who was the leader asked. You can suppress your chakra and mask your scent but I can still sense you. It doesn't matter. Your heads will fetch fine bounties. So you're from Iwa. Asuma drew his knives, do you really think that the six of you can take all of us? We have five Junin and eleven Chunin here. We'll see. Three of the hunters threw a hailstorm of Kanais and Shurikens while two created a dozen mud clones and the last ones summoned six tigers. You're not the only one that can summon. Just as Naruto said that, a dozen drones ran out of the entrance. What the hell are those things? One of the hunters asked the leader. Who cares? Get them. The drones and Chunin made short work of the clones and summons. One of the hunters singled out Eno and threw six kanais at her. Eno dodged the kanais but messed up her landing and fell over. Ow! Eno grabbed her ankle. The hunter Nin jumped forward, kanai ready to stab Eno but was saved by two runners tackling him in midair and pinning him to the ground. He tried to get up but a tongue strike to the shoulder prevented him from getting away. She thanked them more out of reflex than actual gratitude. When she thought about it, Naruto did say they were intelligent but did they understand her? Neji strike two of the clones destroying one of them while the other was destroyed by several shurikens to the back from Tenten. While Lee fought another clone to a stand still before it was double teamed by Lee and Hanada. Naruto extended his combi stick and blocked a dual kanai strike from one of the hunter nin. Who are you? You don't seem to be from Konoha. The hunter nin jumped back to avoid a swipe from his stuff. I left Konoha years ago. So you're a missing nin then? Why don't you join us? He dodged a thrust and threw three shurikens. Naruto deflected the shurikens with his stuff. No thanks. Not interested. And fired a plasma bolt from his left gauntlet that caught the nin by surprise, seriously wounding him. Two more hunter nin fell to the ground while the leader and other survivor jumped back and took stock of the situation. Shit. This is bad. He pointed out the survivor. Damn. Retreat. Don't let them get away. Naruto ordered as a dozen drones chased after the fleeing hunters. Are you okay, Ino? Asuma asked as Sakura checked her injuries. I can heal her, but she should stay off her foot for at least a couple of hours. Looks like you're staying put, Ino, Asuma told her. Great. Take them to the chambers. Naruto ordered, which sent a chill down everyone's spine before he turned to Ino. Here I'll help you. He picked her up bridal style and carried her back as the other left. Thanks. Ino blushed as she wrapped her arms around his neck. Only two people noticed the jealous somewhat defended look that appeared on Hanada's face and but not the slight twitch in Sakura's eye. How about a spar, Dobi? I guess I can spare a few minutes to whoop your ass. No summoning and that includes your angels. Fine. No weapons. Sasuke grunted and got on a stance. Naruto took off his cloak, removed his gauntlets and plasma caster before getting into a defensive stance. They stared at each other for a moment before turning to Sakura, well? Are you going to start the match or what? Huh. What? Oh okay. Start. Fire style. Phoenix flower jutsu. Water style. Dragon missile jutsu. Water broke through some of the pipes hidden in the walls behind Naruto and the elemental projectiles clashed into each other most neutralizing each other but some of the water shots made it through forcing Sasuke to dodge them and block the hard flying roundhouse kick that Naruto threw through the white cloud that formed from their previous attack but was thrown back by lightning that suddenly surrounded Sasuke, shocking him. Ah. What the hell? How do you like my Chidori Nagashi? Naruto slowly got to his feet, not bad. I see you modified your Chidori. You're not the only one that's been training hard and this is not the only new jutsu in my arsenal. Hey forehead what's going on? Ino asked walking next to Sakura with the other Konoha nin. Hey Ino pig. Sasuke and Naruto are having a spar and it looks like Sasuke's upping the ante. Chidori sendon, that might be a bad move, Kakashi commented. Wind style. Hurricane. With a hard uppercut swing Naruto created winds strong enough to blow the Senbons back towards the slightly off-balanced Sasuke. Shit. 
Sasuke had no chose but to active his Sharingan to dodge the incoming Senbons. I see you activated your Sharingan. Guess you're getting serious. Aren't you? I say we're pretty evenly matched with one element each that's strong against the other. True. Naruto brought his leg behind him ready to charge forward in a burst of speed. This is getting interesting. Kakashi commented as he revealed his Sharingan. Naruto launched forward as half a dozen shadow clones appeared behind him and rushed past him, each throwing punches and kicks when they got close enough but were blocked and quickly disposed off by Sasuke who was keeping count. Suddenly Sasuke was completely surrounded by darkness. What the, Genjutsu? Since when could he use Genjutsu and why can't my Sharingan see through it? Sasuke thought as he looked around to find Naruto. If you're wondering. Naruto's disembodied voice sounded like it came from all around Sasuke before ending up behind him, it's not a Genjutsu. Sasuke spun around just in time to see Naruto take a claw-handed swipe at his face, dark style, eternal darkness. What the heck is that? Ino asked as a sphere of darkness surrounded the match area. Genjutsu. Since when could Naruto use Genjutsu? No it's not a Genjutsu. Kuranai was about to explain but was interrupted by a scream of terror and the sphere disappeared revealing a panicked Sasuke holding his arms out trying to feeling around. I can't see. I can't see. I'm blind. The other nin quickly jumped forward to try and calm Sasuke down when Sakura looked into his eyes and gasped. The normal bright though hard eyes of Sasuke were dull, gray and lifeless. Hold on. I'll heal you. Don't bother. Kai. The color returned to Sasuke's eyes and he breathed a sigh of relief. What the hell was that? That was one of my moves, eternal darkness. It takes away the sight of my intended target for as long as I want or till I am defended. The explanation sent a chill down the spines of the dojutsu users. The idea that such a technique existed with the sole purpose of blinding a target was not something they were comfortable with. So what happened after I hurled your ass back to the village? Naruto asked as Sasuke watched Naruto's clones training. Well from what Sakura told me, most of guys reported to the Hokage including the Sand siblings and she told them about Kayubi. That's why you guys didn't look surprised. What did you expect Dobi? Us to run away cowering as if you were Kayubi itself? No. We accepted that you were just the container and not the demon itself. Naruto couldn't help but smile as Sasuke continued. I was in hospital for about a week before Jiraiya came and suppressed my cursed seal then there was my trial. Trial? I would think that the council would give you little more than a slap on the wrist or a, don't do that again. What was it, a show trial? Kinda. The fucking civilian council was ready to do like you said but at the end of it all, I was placed under house arrest for a month. Even then they were up in arms. Not that I cared. Why would that be? Naruto. When I said you were my best friend back at the Valley of the End, I wasn't lying and I was ready to consider you as my brother and once my head was clear, I wasn't happy when Sakura told me what the villagers did. Nice to know you cared so much. So you and Sakura together? Naruto asked, casually turning around and leaned his back against the railing. What? She hasn't told you. What have you two been talking about the last two days? Hey I was busy training and only talked to her twice if you can even call those conversations. Most of the time, she would tell me how sorry she was and watch me work. No we aren't together. She did try to convince me to try and give it a chance but I didn't think it was right to give her false hope though I didn't think her heart was in it as much as it used to be. I had to tell her every last bloody detail of how I honestly tried to kill you. Even shoving the Chidori into your chest. Both of them winced at the memory. Thank Kami I dodged at the last second. You and me both Doby. Sigh, she denied it for a while and when she finally accepted it, sigh, she completely broke down and kept saying it was all her fault. Kakashi sensei had to knock her out and it took a few sessions with a counselor before she was fit enough to return to active duty and she became Tsunade Sama's apprentice. I'm glad she got better. Have you stopped loving her like you used to? Naruto got a far away look on his face as if wondering but didn't answer Sasuke. You know we really missed you and I have to admit, you've gotten strong. Guess we can't call you the dead last anymore can we, Dobi? Sasuke joked. Since when do you joke? Anyway thanks Teme. I'll catch up with you later. Naruto disappeared in a puff of smoke. HN. Shadow clone. Clearing outside hive, hold it, hold it, 
Naruto chanted as sweat poured from his brow as he tried to add elemental manipulation to his Rasengan in his hand before it completely fell apart along with all the other Rasengans his clones held. God damn it. He fell to his knees exhausted and the clones dispelled. This is freaking impossible. It's like trying to look left and right at the same time. At this rate it'll take years. Easy kit. This kind of thing takes years to master. Come on Naruto. This kind of thing takes time. It's like trying to look left and right at the same time. It's impossible, Naruto sighed. Oh really? Kakashi created a shadow clone. Now I can look left. Kakashi looked left and pointed. And right at the same time. The clone looked right and pointed before disappearing and looked at Naruto with a reassuring smile or as reassuring as he could with a mask on. Naruto's eyes widened in surprise as an idea hit him. Suka. He yelled as he got to his feet. I got it. Did he really get an idea just from that? Kakashi and Kayubi thought. Konoha. Hokage's office. The team that headed back to Konoha traveled hard and almost non-stop with little sleep and even less food and lots of soldier pills. They had to make it back as soon as possible to report what they knew and were able to make it in just over two days. Currently, Asuma and Gai were informing the Hokage and her assistant what they've learned about Naruto and his intentions so far while the others headed home to rest. That is very disturbing but are you sure that Kayubi isn't influencing him? Influencing maybe as much as any sensei can influence their student but in control and forcing Naruto to do things, no. That's good at least. So do you know what he's planning? Yes, he plans to build his skill and forces before destroying a shinobi village and joining another village. With Kakashi training with him, he might be able to get a grasp of his skill level. What are the chances that he will attack Konoha? Depends. He's promised not to attack us at least till the end of our current conflict with Iwa and its allies and you know Naruto and his promises but after that, even odds at best. How many of those things does he have? We estimate he has at least a thousand of them but we weren't able to visually confirm but that is a low estimate, all ruthless, fearless and pretty much expendable. And with each person he captures alive, he can breed another. What do you mean? Asuma and Guy explained everything they knew about the Xenos from them being aliens, their castes and abilities and more importantly their life cycle. Tsunade and Shizune paled as they listened to the description of what happened in the birthing chamber and how casual Naruto acted about it. There's more. Guy informed her. Tsunade groaned and pinched the bridge of her nose. She needed sake. What now? Asuma gave Tsunade the bingo book, it's Naruto's bingo book. Stunned, she quickly grabbed it and started to flip through it. He's got a lot if not all of Root's members as well as some Chunin and Junin but the biggest shock and problem is the rather large number of council members in there. This could be problematic. She sighed and reached into her special drawer. You mean troublesome. You hang around Shikamaru too much. Hive, throne room, hello Sakura. Evening Naruto. She returned the greeting as she pulled a chair near him and watched him work. She was slightly taken aback and hurt that he stopped calling her, Sakura-chan. When they first spoke alone but was determined to earn back his trust and friendship and get him to add the, Chan, back. What are you doing? Working on a little project. He typed a few more keys and a diagram of a small craft appeared and with a few more presses of selected keys a taskbar appeared and Naruto leaned back as the computer processed the data. All this time he did not even look at Sakura. When Sakura and the others first saw the wall off to the side of his throne room open up and his computer console moved into view, they were stunned at how advanced it was. There were very few computers in Konoha and all used by Anbu and the Medic Corp. But they were nowhere near as advanced as what Naruto had. Naruto, I'm sorry about what's happened and how I've treated you. And for the hundredth time Sakura, I forgive you. Then why won't you call me, Sakura-chan? like you used to. She sounded hurt. Do you, do you hate me so much? Naruto stopped working and turned to face her. Sakura, I don't hate you. I admit I was hurt but I could never hate you. Anyway I thought you found it annoying when I called you Sakura-chan and ran after you for dates. He gave her a smile. Sakura smiled a little though she was tearing. Yeah you were really annoying back then but, she lowered her head, you never gave up. You kept trying harder every time you failed and you always keep your promises. Naruto noticed that she was crying now as the tears fell on the floor, and you've saved my life more than once and I never treated you right or even thank you once. She was sobbing now and Naruto nervously wrapped his arms around her and pulled her into a hug. 
He really hoped he wouldn't get hit for this but surprisingly Sakura just leaned into his, unarmored, chest before returning the hug. Hey Naruto are those date offers still good? Hinata and Tenten wandered down one of the many corridors of the hive, mapping as they went along till they noticed a door. Tenten tried to open it but was stopped by Hinata. We should wait for the others. They're right behind us. I'm sure they'll be along in a minute. It can't hurt to take a look. She opened the door and the two of them entered. It was a fairly large room and the walls were metal with grid pattern with some holes on the walls as well as smaller one on the ground level and even a large pit on the opposite end of the chamber. It looked like the birthing chamber but not used. I have a bad feeling about this. May. Maybe we should, le, leave. Y'all I think you're, ah. Tenten was interrupted by a roar from the side and was pinned against the wall and lifted up by her neck along with Hanada. Tenten and Hanada screamed at the monster that held them captive. It was much taller and bulkier than those that they had seen before, in fact it looked very different. It had lighter skin color and tentacle-like dreadlocks and four additional mandibles which were spread wide as it roared at them. Tenten. Hanada. Kakashi yelled from the entrance. My god. Kuranai stared in a mixture of terror and awe at the Predalion. Sasuke quickly ran through some seals, fire style, gr. But was interrupted when a hand grabbed and pulled his hand away from his face, I wouldn't do that if I were you, not unless you want to cook the two of them as well and fight them. Sasuke wanted to argue but noticed the large number of Xenos on the walls behind Naruto and Sakura and looked back into the chamber and to his and everyone else's horror, another two Predalions walked crawled out of their hiding places. Put them down. Naruto ordered which the Predalion complied and the two terrified girls ran to the group. Naruto waved the Xenos off and closed the chamber before turning to face the group, looks like you found the Predalion birthing chamber. Come with me. Throne room, Naruto, what was that? Ino asked. My angels weren't the only ones that came from the stars. In fact, by our standards my angels though very intelligent are little more than beasts. They spread by impregnating other species, some of which have been traveling the stars long before man even walked the earth. Naruto typed in a few key and a hologram of a full-sized predator without its mask appeared in front of them. Man Sakura and I thought you had a big forehead. Shut it, pig. They are hunters or predators. They hunt creatures across the universe for sport, honor and glory. And their greatest prize were the great serpents, or as I call them angels. To prove their worth. Young predators must pass a trial by entering a specially built structure and kill all the serpents. The hologram changed to show a pyramid and an underground labyrinth. If they succeed, they will be marked as a full-fledged hunter. Naruto took off his cloak and armor and pulled aside his chain mill shirt and showed them the same stylized T that was on his helmet, scared on his skin. Of course I don't have such a complex but I have killed a few of my angels in a couple of fights before. Similar to the trials the unblooded predators took, but not as complex. Anyway, most if not all of the weapons that you don't recognize are from the predators like my wrist blades, plasma caster and cloaking device. But Naruto how can you read their language? Kuranai asked. Kayubi. He typed a few more keys and the predator hieroglyphs changed to English, Japanese. And it's good that I was able to integrate a language conversion program thanks to Kayubi and a friend of mine. The creature you saw just now was a Predalion named for the fact that it has kept an unusually high percentage of its host's DNA which of course was a predator thus giving rays to a different caste in the hive and it has its own unique abilities. Like what? Sakura asked almost afraid of the answer. Being able to use a woman's womb as host to multiple drones. All the Kunoichi's hands unconsciously moved to their stomachs while Kakashi's eye widened at the possibility of Naruto having even more angels at his disposal. This could be very bad for Konoha, Kakashi thought. Did they have any other weapons? Tenten asked as Naruto worn back his armor and cloak, hoping to change the subject of the Predalion. Naruto smirked and got up, follow me. Naruto led them down another corridor before opening a door which led to his armory. At first they did not notice anything unusual other than racks of standard shinobi weapons like shurikens, kanais, exploding tags, katanas, tonfas and even bows and arrows but further back there were weapons and devices that the other nin could not identify. Tenten was the first into the armory and picked up a device and was about to push a button when Naruto grabbed it out of her hands. Easy there Tenten. You're too cute to be rendered into nothing but bones. 
and placed the plasma mine back on the shelf, missing the blush on her face. Anyway these weapons are for use by me and maybe one day my clan. Naruto proceeded to retrieve a few weapons, tucking them into his belt and other compartments and attachments before picking up a net gun and leading them back to the training area, where he showed them the use of the combi stick and the predator shurikens which were like the demon windmill shuriken that had retractable blades and were much deadlier and finally the net gun which could be set to capture or kill. Kakashi sensei, I think it's time to carry on with our training. Kakashi nodded and followed Naruto while Neji and Sasuke decided to stay and train with each other and the girls headed back to their room. The girls sat around in one of their rooms while Kurenai decided to take a shower. Let's play truth or dare. Ino suggested. Feeling bored, the other girls agreed and sat around in a circle. Hanada, truth or dare? Ino started. Air, truth. An evil grin crossed Ino's face. What did you think about Naruto when he first took off his mask? Hanada blushed bright red, looked down and mumbled something. Sorry Hanada can you speak louder? Ino and the other girls leaned over and Hanada mumbled again. What was that? I said I thought he looked hot and I wanted to do him right there and then. Hanada realized that she just shouted what she thought and blushed even more before fainting. Damn. I didn't think she'd say that much. Come off it piggy. You know Hanada's had a major crush on Naruto since the academy. Well till she wakes up, we'll skip her turn so I'm next. Tenton chipped in, Sakura truth or dare? Truth. Who would you rather have sex with, Sasuke or Naruto? Sakura was about to say the first thing that came to her mind which was Sasuke but stopped and thought for a moment. Oh. What this? Is forehead giving some serious thought about the new dark Naruto? Ino teased. Shut up pig. Sakura couldn't hide the blush that appeared on her face. It's just that, that, I, Naruto okay. I pick Naruto, Ino, truth or dare, hoping to take the attention away from her. Tisk. Dare. An evil grin appeared on Sakura's face, I dare you to strip and get in the shower with Kurenai sensei. A look of shock crossed Ino's face before she got up and walked towards the bathroom and started to strip and quickly got into the bathroom just as Hanada started to stir. Ooh. What happened? Nothing much Hanada. Tenten reassured her but a dark blush appeared on her face as she remembered what happened and then there was a scream from the bathroom. Sorry Kurenai sensei. Yelled a slightly wet Ino as she ran out and wrapped a towel around her and rejoined the other girls. There, happy forehead? Tenten, truth or dare? Truth. Do you want to jump Naruto? What? A light blush appeared on Tenten's face. Oh come on Tenten, it's a fairly well-known fact that women of your family are not interested in money, fame or political power but show them an interesting weapon and they'll be all over the guy. Ino smirked. Tenten blushed a shade of red that could rival Hanada's and buried her face in the pillow she was hugging. And Naruto's got a whole armory of weapons that no one on this world has access to except him. Hanada did not like where this was going. I bet you just want to take the trial so that you can be part of his clan huh? Be you, but nah. Naruto-kun, didn't say that if you ta, took the trial, you'll be part of Hai, his clan. True but Naruto has lived the last three years more or less as one of these hunters and passing the trial will definitely earn you some bonus points. A thoughtful look appeared on the faces of the other three girls. They continued to play for a while more before a slightly red-faced Kurenai came out and after explaining decided to join them but after a couple of rounds, Tenten who was quieter throughout the game got up and left, declining company. Where do you think she's going? Hanada asked. No clue. Ino shrugged. Tenten walked through the halls. She knew she was being watched as long as there were the bone-like patterns on the wall. There were probably drones hiding in plain sight. She entered the throne room and saw Naruto without his armor and looked like he had just got out of the shower and was working on his computer again. Naruto. He turned to face Tenten and gave her his full attention, I want to take the trial. You sure about this? There is no turning back once you get in the pit. Tenten nodded, I'm sure. Everyone stood in the training area and watched quietly as Naruto pushed a button on his gauntlet and a podium-like control panel rose from the floor. Keying in a series of codes, the training ring started to split open from the middle revealing a large rectangular pit about 15 feet in depth. The pit's walls and floor were made from xeno resin and metal, with the walls forming a labyrinth of mazes. 
There were holes on the walls and floors which were the entrances, exits to tunnels that ran throughout and under the pit. With a nod of his head, two warriors and a runner ran into the mini labyrinth and disappeared into some of the many tunnels. Flashback no jutsu, are you insane? Kurinai screamed and walked up and down the hall rubbing her temples and grumbling about dangerous and stupid acts. Tenten had just informed everyone that she had just convinced Naruto to allow her to take the hunter's trial. The reactions were mixed. Kurinai was violent, Kakashi dropped his book, Hanada felt faint, Sasuke and Neji were wide-eyed and Ino and Sakura were acting like goldfish. Maybe, Naruto-kun will talk, take it easy on, her. No he made it very clear that I could die during the trial. I will have to face three drones on my own. No outside help. Everyone fell silent especially Kurinai who fell into a chair, her head in her hands. She could not believe Tenten would do something so so unnecessary, stupid even. Tenten I think you should forget about taking the trial. Fighting three of those things face to face is going to be dangerous. Actually Naruto said the trial will be to kill all three drones in a maze like arena. What? That's it you were pulling out of this trial. Kurinai sensei. Tenten spoke in a calm tone, I've thought long and hard about this and I want to do this. Kakashi. Say something. Train. Everyone turned to Kakashi. We'll have to train her into the ground to prepare her for the trial. The good thing is a weapon specialist is probably as good as a fire user to face those things. Everyone agreed. Some more reluctant than others and spent the next couple of days training Tenten. Kakashi and Sasuke even tried to teach her a fire jutsu or two but she was not able to use fire chakra so they had to train on her speed and reflexes. As the day of the trial drew closer, the tension grew, especially for Kurinai and Tenten. Flashback Kai. Tenten jumped into the pit and looked back as Naruto activated the pit and four giant metal plates started to rise and joined to form a pyramid, triangle ceiling over the pit. The ceiling was opaque with different shape, size windows that allowed light through. Naruto pushed a couple more keys and some light lit in the pit. Several holographic screens appeared, most showing Tenten. Begin. Tenten drew a kanai and slowly made her way through the maze-like corridors of the pit, staying away from the walls especially when the entrances of the tunnels were visible. What she did not notice was a warrior crawling along the ceiling above her. Tenten. Above you, Ina warned. She can't hear you. From here on out, she's on her own. The warrior dropped from above Tenten but she rolled out of the way and threw her kanai at it, which it hit away with its tail and charged her. Tenten blocked a swing from the warrior with her arm and punched it in the stomach, ducking a tongue strike at the same time. She jumped back as it ran back into a tunnel. A runner tried a tail strike from one of the tunnels but she ducked the tail strike to her head and threw a kanai with an exploding tag, but the runner ducked back into the tunnel avoiding the blast. Tenten thought about following it into the tunnel but thought better of it. Better to fight in the open where she could see them, they had the advantage in the dark confined spaces of the tunnels. She rolled out of the tail strike from a warrior hanging on the ceiling and threw six kanais at it, forcing it to drop from the ceiling and face her head on. The warrior's claws slashed across Tenten's arm, ripping her sleeve and drawing blood. She threw a couple of shurikens at the warrior and had to dodge a tail strike from the second warrior from behind. Tenten. Kurinai screamed and looked to Naruto hoping that he would stop this, but was disheartened to see an indifferent look on his face. But what Kakashi noticed that she did not was that every time Tenten had a close call or got hurt, Naruto's face would twist just a little. Tenten threw a demon windmill shuriken at the first warrior, cage shuriken jutsu. The single shuriken turned into five forcing the warrior to run back into the tunnel but what it failed to notice was that Tenten had thrown a kanai with an explosive tag into the tunnel before it ran in. She turned around and jumped back, avoiding a pounce from the runner just as the explosive tag detonated sending shrapnel and acid blood towards Tenten's back. Ah! Tenten fell to the ground as the runner approached her and picked her up by her throat and opened its mouth, ready to end it. The girls couldn't look. Tenten shoved a kanai up the runner's chin, forcing its mouth shut and to let go of her. She quickly unsealed a katana and beheaded the struggling runner. Tenten looked around, katana at the ready trying to find the last drone. Suddenly, the warrior broke through the floor grabbed her and bit her thigh but just as it let go to try a headbite, Tenten took a swing cutting off both its arms and the front half of its head. She then slowly pulled herself out of the hole, ignoring the acid that was burning her already injured leg. 
Naruto dropped the ceiling and the girls quickly ran in to check and heal Tenten, missing the loud sigh of relief that Naruto let out. If you were so worried about her, you shouldn't have let her attempt the trial. Sasuke smirked. Shut it Sasuke. The girls quickly got to Tenten and pulled her out of the hole and started to treat her wounds. You did it Tenten. You passed the trial. Ino congratulated her while she healed her back. It was still a stupid thing to do. You could have been killed. Sakura reprimanded as she healed her leg, but all the same, you did great. Thanks guys. Tenten started to relax as the pain she experienced, started to lessen. Congratulations Tenten. They turned to see Naruto walking towards them leading the guys. You know what happens now don't you? Tenten nodded and started to unbutton her top, shocking everyone. Tenten what are you doing? Sakura stopped her from taking of her top. Getting my mark. She looked towards Naruto who broke off the finger of one of the dead Zenos before kneeling in front of her. Sakura reluctantly backed away as Tenten took off her top showing her pink bra. Kurenai, Sakura and Ino glared at the guys, who averted their eyes. Naruto used the claw of the finger which had some acid on it to draw the mark of a full-fledged predator just above her left breast. He placed his fingers on it and channeled chakra into the mark with glowed red for a moment healing, leaving just a scar. Good. Now sign your name on this in blood then place your fingerprints at the bottom of your name. Naruto unsealed a summoning contract and unrolled it, revealing his name to be the only name on the contract. Tenten did as instructed. Naruto nodded in approval before rolling up the scroll and sealing it back into a small storage scroll. He walked over to the only complete Zeno skull and started to skin and cure the skull as everyone watched fascinated. Naruto picked it up and handed the blenched skull of the slaved runner to Tenten, who got back to her feet, forgetting to button up and accepted the skull. Your first trophy. Thank you Naruto. Naruto spoke as he walked away. Rest now, we will start your training tomorrow. Lunch will be ready in an hour. Hive. Konoha room. Tenten walked in and placed her trophy on the table and admired the quality work Naruto did in preserving the skull. She wondered what other trophies she could earn in the future. Maybe Naruto and her could go on an animal safari one day. She was so lost in thought that she did not notice Sakura observing the skull, till she heard Ino say something. You were so cool in there. I'm sure if Guy Sensei or Lee were around, they'd be screaming about your flames of youth and some other junk. Yes you were very impressive in there. I'm proud to have you as my teammate. What I'm interested in is how do those things hunt? Naruto cleaned out all the organs but there are no obvious signs of eyes or noses. Everything was quiet for a moment as they thought about what Sakura said. They would have to give the skull to the Hokage to study later if Tenten doesn't mind. Tenten looked good in pink. Kakashi randomly spoke out while Sasuke nodded in agreement. Hentai. Kurenai hit Kakashi and Sakura smacked the back of Sasuke's head. Naruto walked into the queen's chamber, who looked up as if waking from sleep. What do you think of her? He asked pausing for a moment listening. I'm glad you agree that she is a good addition to the hive but like I said whether she stays with us in the end or we return to Konoha remains to be seen. Naruto listened for a moment before smirking and walking out the room as the queen, smiled, before going back to, sleep. Naruto and Tenten stood in the middle of the clearing that he and Kakashi had been using to try and complete the Rasengan. Now it was just him and Tenten since he trusts her enough and she earned the right to some of his technique though he was very sure she was more interested in the weapons he'll allow her to use. The hand signs to summon the angels are the same as any other contract and normally once you sign a summoning contract you can't sign another but like I said before the angels of the apocalypse is not a true summoning contract in the traditional sense. So can you still summon toads? Yes I can. I just haven't done so in a long time and you can still sign another summoning contract. If you do, all you have to do is to call out, angels of the apocalypse, and you will summon the angels instead of your other summons. The difference and the difficult part of this is that you must keep in mind what and how many you want to summon, blood and chakra are the sacrifice and will activate the scroll. I want you to focus on summoning as many warriors as you can. Tenten nodded bit her thumb and went through the seal and slammed her hand on the floor, summoning Jutsu. Angels of the Apocalypse. A cloud of white smoke appeared and as it cleared it revealed two warriors and a runner. Not bad Tenten. Now try again. This time, channel as much chakra as you can and remember warriors only. Naruto dismissed the drones as Tenten tried again, 
this time summoning three warriors. They carried on for the rest of the day till it was dinner time. The Konoha Nin entered the room and gathered in the hall, all anxious about Tenten's progress. So Tenten how did your training go with Naruto today? Kakashi asked since Naruto spent the day training Tenten and they'd mapped as much of this place as they could, he spent most of the day catching up on his reading. Well we spent the day practicing summoning his angels, Sai, I can only summon five warriors. My chakra reserves aren't large enough to summon more so I have to work on increasing my chakra reserves. I guess I can work with you on some chakra exercises. I think you girls should join in, you could always use better control and increase your chakra reserves. Kurinai suggested and the girls nodded. Anyway can you guys believe how great a cook Naruto is? Man I could eat his cooking every day. Konoha, Hokage's office, Gai, Asuma, Shikamaru, Shino, Choji, Kiba and Lee were gathered in the Hokage's office waiting for her and her assistant as instructed when said people walked into the room. Tsunade gave a tired sigh as she dropped in her chair. Hard time with the council? Shikamaru asked. Stupid civilians demanding that we crash our enemies and the elders adding fuel by saying it makes us look weak and that damn warhawk wanting to send our anbu. Not his mind you straight into the heart of Iwa for the Suchikage's head. Idiots. Tsunade reached over to her, special, drawer and pulled out a jar of sake and has about to take a drink before it was taken away by her assistant, god damn it. Give me that shizun. Can you at least brief them first before you decide to get yourself stone drunk? Shizun motioned to the nin present. Fine. The council still does not know that it was Naruto that attacked those camps and thankfully Naruto has not released his bingo book yet, if not it will be even more difficult to keep his identity secret. Yes, it seems Kakashi was successful in delaying the bingo book. I want the two of you to take your teams and Kurinai's back to Naruto's base and set up a meeting between him and me. In the meantime, I want you to bring the others back. The council is starting to get suspicious about the missing members though the ninjas are keeping quiet. Hi Hokage sama. Now, give me my sake, hive, training area. Now that you've got a grasp of summoning, it will be up to you to practice and refine your skills. Hi. So today, I've decided to work on what is your most obvious strength. Naruto created a shadow clone and sent it to the other end of the fighting ring. Go ahead and throw some kanais or shurikens at it. Tenten threw three kanai at the shadow clone which created a wind barrier that blew the kanais away reminding Tenten of her defeat at the hands of Tamari at the Chunin preliminaries a couple of years ago. Now watch this. Naruto removed a disc from a holder on his thigh and threw it at his clone, halfway towards its target it was surrounded by a powerful electric charge. The clone created a more powerful wind barrier than before but the disc corrected itself and flew through the barrier, cutting the clone in half before it dispelled as well as grazing a pillar before it flew back to Naruto who caught it. This is a chakra or smart disc. It is an extremely sharp circular weapon that is thrown like a discus and returns to the user like a boomerang. This weapon is extremely powerful and can easily cut through flesh and bone. It can also be used as a slashing melee weapon. Tenten looked at the weapon in awe. It is yours as soon as you can master this. Naruto held up a similar looking weapon but the edges looked blunt. This is a training disc, I lost a lot of shadow clones practicing with the real thing and I'd prefer for you to remain in one piece. Though Tenten was a little disappointed, she gave Naruto a smile. After all he was only looking out for her. She took the training disc and threw her arms around his neck hugging him. Arigato Naruto-kun. They stared into each other's eyes for a moment before they started to draw closer together. Tenten closed her eyes as their lips met in a soft but lingering kiss. Unbeknownst to the two at the time, Sakura had walked in on the two of them and hid back into the corridor. She couldn't help but feel hurt and jealous but most of all, regret. It's been three days since Sakura saw Naruto and Tenten kiss and she wasn't feeling any better. She was angry, hurt, jealous and downright confused. She hadn't tried to speak to Naruto alone the last two days and she was pretty sure Tenten was with him in the evenings after training with Kakashi since she was hardly in their room after dinners. She had no idea what he felt for her. Did he still have feelings for her? Heck. Did she even feel that way about him after everything that's happened? Yesterday was when she reached her boiling point, Tenten had returned from her training session with Naruto and she was glowing and as if that wasn't enough, she was humming and there was just that extra spring in her step. Ino had just brushed it off as just Tenten being really happy to get some new toys but she knew better. 
So here she was now, in the middle of the forest clearing. A clearing she made herself after taking some of her frustrations out on the trees but it wasn't enough. She was breathing hard but it didn't help her much. You know there are probably easier ways of clearing a forest. Ways that are not likely to draw attention to the hive. Naruto dropped down a few feet behind her and removed his mask and attached it to his hip. She really did not want to see him right now at least not till she got her head straight, not easy when you have a damn inner voice shouting perverted nonsense about her and Naruto every other hour. Why don't you tell me what's wrong? You haven't come back to try and talk for a couple of days now. It's nothing, can you just drop it? You know you're acting like you're hiding something and avoiding me. Did I do something? Sakura couldn't look at him, she wasn't sure which would have been worst, him looking at her in concern like he used to or with the near emotionless look on his face he has on most of the time since they found him. Sigh, it's nothing Naruto and it's not your fault. Not entirely, she thought to herself as she turned to walk away. You seem pretty worked up about something. How about I help you relieve some of that stress? How about a spar? Not interested. She continued to walk away. If you beat me or at least impress me, I'll start calling you Sakura-chan again if you like. Sakura stopped in mid-stride, she did not have to turn around. She could almost feel that damn foxy grin of his and without turning around, started to put on her gloves and cracked her knuckles. This was too good an opportunity to pass up, a two-for-one deal. She could vent her frustrations and she might be able to get him to be more open towards her. Naruto did not like the smirk she had on her face as he kept his guard up. He picked up a small pebble, we'll start when this hits the ground. Naruto threw the paddle straight up and got into a defensive stance. Just as the pebble hit the ground, Sakura punched the ground causing it to crack and break, sending a shockwave towards Naruto. Naruto's eyes widened at the destruction before him, what insane strength. How do you like that Naruto-kun? She smirked as she ran towards him. She gathers chakra in her fists and releases it at the precise moment of impact. It takes perfect chakra control. Shit. Then I better not get hit or I'm dead. Naruto thought as he dodged a couple of punches and tried to sweep kick Sakura but she jumped out of the way and threw three kanais at him. Naruto jumped up and created five shadow clones and sent them to fight her. Fighting her in a straight taijutsu match is suicide with her super strength and she knows it. Naruto thought as she dispelled his clones and he got the information from them. Naruto avoided a couple more of her punches and tried to hit her with a roundhouse kick which she blocked and tried to connect with a roundhouse of her own. Naruto ducked and tried to connect with an uppercut. Sakura jumped back avoiding the uppercut, landed on a tree and jumped off the tree as a black tentacle left a large gash on the spot where she was. Naruto figured that he most likely lost to Sakura's strength punch for punch and he was not good enough of a grappler to take her on in that that just left speed which he hoped he could match her, and stamina which he was pretty sure he could beat her in. Naruto created seven shadow clones and together they surrounded her and started to attack from all sides, forcing Sakura to go on the defensive, hoping to try and wear her down. Because of the multiple attacks and avoidance of her attacks, Sakura was forced to block also all the hits which were starting to hurt. Kit you either have to get serious or creative if you want to win this fight. I think I have an idea that I want to try. Naruto dispelled the clones and dropped in front of Sakura, who threw a punch right at Naruto's chest sending the both of them sliding forward, back several feet. Not bad Sakura, Chan. Sakura looked surprised. Naruto had caught her punch with both hands. Ho. How did you do that? I gathered chakra in my palms and released at the same time you hit. He answered as he walked away. She stood there stunned for a few moments but brightened up when she realized he called her Sakura Chan. Impressive kit. Your chakra control has definitely improved. Yes but it's still nowhere near Sakura's level. That really hurt. Naruto went to get some ice for his sore hands while trying to ignore Kayubi's laughter. Stupid fox. The team of Konoha Nin arrived at the entrance to the tunnel they had exited the hive almost three weeks ago. Asuma was about to try and find the trapdoor but stopped when he heard a hiss and looked up to see a runner in front of the group. Easy. Asuma backed up with his hands up. We'll just here to see Naruto. Not to fight or anything. The runner watched them for a moment before swinging its head to the side and ran off in that direction before stopping and looked back at them. I think it wants us to follow it. Kiba suggested. They nodded and followed the runner to a clearing where they saw the other Konoha Nin standing there. 
Yo Kakashi! Gaia yelled grabbing the attention of all the nin. Gai sensei! Li! Tenten greeted. Asuma sensei! Shikamaru! Choji! You're back! What's going on here? Asuma asked noticing several targets set at the center of the clearing and Naruto standing between them and the targets. I believe Naruto's finished his technique. Kakashi answered. Naruto started to draw on the fox's chakra causing his pupils to turn into slits. As he started to form a Rasengan, a shadow clone appeared and started to apply nature manipulation. What is that? Ino stared at the glowing sphere in Naruto's hand. That's some screech and the chakra is incredible. Wow. Wind style. Rasen Shuriken. Naruto threw the disc at the targets. Just as it reached the targets, it expanded, cutting them in half before exploding, sending a shockwave towards them. Amazing. The number of hits was extraordinary. Even with the Sharingan I couldn't count them. This is going to be troublesome, I just know it. Naruto smiled at the power of his wind elemental Rasengan, before his face looked like he just realized something and started to laugh. It was a dark almost evil laugh that sent chills down everyone's spine. It's time. What do you mean Naruto? Sakura asked. I'm heading to Iwa. Naruto walked swiftly through the corridors towards the armory, the Konoha Nin hot on his heels. Naruto-kun what do you mean you're going to Iwa? Sakura asked as she ran up next to him. Naruto stopped in front of the armory, punched in the code and walked through. The guys who had not seen the armory before stared wide-eyed at the assortment of weapons at Naruto's disposal. Tenten grabbed Asuma's cigarette and stepped on it, sorry Asuma sensei, no smoking in the weapons room. Nah, Naruto-kun, my techniques are ready. So it is time to put my plans into action. Naruto grabbed dozens of kanais and shurikens and placed them on the table with some scrolls along with a couple of predator shurikens and a pair of combi sticks. And you're planning on attacking Iwa, troublesome. Naruto, I don't know what to say. Then don't say anything Kakashi sensei. Naruto placed a chakra on his right thigh and locked an attachment on each of his gauntlets. This is business, nothing personal. Still we are grateful that you're not attacking Konoha but one of our enemies. In fact the Hokage is hoping to meet you and arrange an alliance and with this I'm sure she'll. Asuma stopped talking when Naruto pointed his right arm at his head and a turret lifted from his gauntlet. Do not assume too much Asuma-san. Everyone tensed. Just because my target happens to be one of your enemies doesn't mean I'm aligning myself with Konoha. There is little I want to do with that village and I can easily change my mind. They tensed even more when a couple of drones dropped in behind them. Everyone started to nervously look between Naruto and the drones but all eyes turned to Tenten as she walked up to Naruto. She reached up and slowly lowered his arm, Naruto-kun please. He locked back the turret and lowered his arm, making everyone breathe a sigh of relief as the drones disappeared from sight. Thread carefully Tenten. Just because you bear my mark does not mean you are immune to my wrath. He sealed his chosen weapons into the scrolls and walked out of the room with them. The Konoho Nin parting like the Red Sea but stopped and pointed at her forehead protector, as long as you wear that symbol you are not immune from my wrath. As he walked down the corridor, Kiba realized what he said, hey! What did he mean you bear his mark? Are you his mate or something? A thermonuclear blush appeared on Tenten's face, she and the other female Chunin including Hanada screamed, hentai, and hit him. What I say? Konoha, Hokage's office. Tsunade had finally finished the last of her paperwork and was now enjoying a well-deserved break. Thankfully there haven't been any council meetings recently so she just had to tackle her normal foe, paperwork. While the civilians being quiet was of little concern to her after all she had people reporting on them every once in a while, it was Danzo that she was worried about. The Warhawk had been quiet lately, too quiet. He was under watch almost 24 hours a day. She hated to think that resources were being wasted watching members of Konoha but unfortunately not everyone on the council had Konoha's best intentions at heart and Danzo was at the top of that list. Hours after Tsunade and Shizun left for home, an Anbu with a Nei mask walks out of the shadows and moves over to the Hokage's desk and opened a wood panel, revealing a safe. Spinning the dial to the correct combination, he opened it. He took out one of the scrolls, opened it, started to copy it before returning everything to the way it was and disappeared without a trace. Hive. The girls walked to the corridors as quickly as they could without running. 
they had volunteered to talk to Naruto after everyone was brought up to speed about everything that's happened when the others were back in Konoha. They entered the throne room expecting to see Naruto working at his computer or sitting on his throne but he was nowhere to be seen. They left the throne room and started to look everywhere they could except the queen's chamber, locked rooms and especially the birthing chambers which they gave a wide berth. The girls walked back into the throne room and just started waiting till Tenten walked towards one of the wall that they knew hid the Xenos in plain sight. What are you doing? Ino asked. Well Naruto-kun said that they will listen to me to a certain extent and after a while I will be able to start understanding them and use them for scouting. And you want to ask them where Naruto is? Sakura looked skeptical. It can't hurt. True. Erm, can you tell me where Naruto-kun is? For a moment Tenten felt stupid when nothing happened but some drones moved away from the wall next to the throne, revealing a door. Tenten touched the keypad and the door slide open and the girls cautiously entered. The room was larger than the hall of their room and was lit by light blue lights and unlike the throne room, the walls were made of stone. There were a few regular sized doors in the room and one large one. There was a large desk with scrolls and a mask on it as well as a few shelves with books and scrolls and weapons racks on the wall. There were also a small computer console on the wall next to a king-size bed. Is this Naruto-kun's bedroom? Na, Naruto-kun's bed, bedroom. Well that baka's got to sleep sometimes. Could use a woman's touch maybe some flowers. The girls spread out and looked around the room. Hanada stopped at a door and started to blush when she heard a shower being run behind it, she had a very good idea who was back there. Tenten walked over to the desk and picked up the mask, it looked the same as the one Naruto normally wore including the markings but this one was newer and had no signs of battle damage and the metal straps that held the mask to his head were missing. Sakura sat on his bed and noticed two photo frames on the nightstand and noticed one was the autographed photo from Princess Yukie and the other was the photo of Team 7 when they were Genin. He kept it. Sakura smiled and held their team photo to her chest. Ino looked at Sakura and shrugged before walking over to the largest and most intricately designed door and touched the panel that caused the door to open in the middle and swing outwards. Wonder what's in here? Ino looked into the room and fell on the floor gasping and covering her mouth in shock. Ino what's wrong? Oh Kami-sama. The others appeared behind Sakura and Ino and saw what was in the room. It was Naruto's trophy room. It was filled with skulls. There were at least six Xeno skulls, one did not look like any they had seen before. It looked like a mini queen's skull but had a much smaller crest and two horns, one protruding for each side of its head. There were other skulls in there as well like a giant snakes that could swallow a man whole and saber-tooth tiger amongst other deadly predators but what shocked them were the at least dozen human skulls, some with their spines attached hanging on the wall as well. I see you found my room and my trophies. The girls turned around and started to blush. Naruto had just gotten out of the shower, still wet with only a towel around his waist. As they took in his appearance, they can't help but blush brighter. Hanada had just invented several new shades of red and though they would deny it if asked more than one perverted thought crossed their minds and some might even say they had little nosebleeds. His face was not the only part of him to lose its baby fat, there wasn't any noticeable fat on his body. It was lean, defined and athletic, his arms were strong, defined and wiry but what drew their attention were the number of scars that covered his washboard abs and pecs. Ignoring the gawking girls, Naruto walks over to the cupboard and walks in, closing the door behind him and after a moment walks out in a pair of black pants and found the girls in the exact same position he left them. Liked what you saw. He deadpanned. The girls blushed even more. What do you want? He asked as he pulled a grey tank top over his head and reached for his armor on his bed. Hey Naruto what's with the attitude? You haven't spoken to us like that since the first week we met. Ino crossed her arms across her chest, annoyed at Naruto's attitude. I don't have time for pleasantries. Thanks to Kakashi, I can move up my plans though I would have like at least a hundred more drones on my side, I have enough. Then why attack now? Tenten asked. Because I'm ready and after hitting those camps, Iwa has been more cautious. In fact after those camps were wiped out, they pulled back most of their other forces that weren't already engaged in fighting to prepare for a possible strike, only recently did they send out those forces again. How do you know all this? The same way I know everything else that's going on. I have my sources, he answered as he wore his gauntlets and checked them. When will you be leaving then? In two hours. 
I should be able to make it to a village a few hours from here by nightfall. He attached his plasma caster to his shoulder before grabbing his new mask, chakra and cloak and headed for a door across the bed, and I expect all of you to be ready to leave when I do. So you want us to come with and help you? Sakura asked almost hopefully. No I expect you to leave and head back to Konoha. Hey. Is that how you treat guests especially the hottest kunoichis in Konoha? Ino huffed. Naruto smirked before putting his mask to his face and held it in place with chakra, he'd only recently gained enough confidence to use chakra to secure his mask instead of the original metal bars and it made it easier to take the mask off. You've seen how I treat kunoichis. His voice held just a hint of amusement as the door closed and locked behind him. You know I think I preferred when he was still acting like an idiot back home. Th. That's not a nick, nice thing to say Eno. Sakura sighed, and I thought that we finally made some progress. I was even hoping that the whole cold distant thing was just a facade. I guess not. Don't worry Sakura. Naruto's still a good guy. I'm sure of it. Tenten tried to assure Sakura. What? Oh come on we just got here. I'm tired. Kiba whined. Oh shut up dog boy. Ino yelled. I bet you rode Akamaru all the way here and he's not complaining. The girls had just returned and informed the rest about Naruto's instructions and that they were not permitted to remain in the hive once Naruto left in just under two hours. Kiba was not happy. I know he's a stone cold bastard now but the least he could do was let us spend the night in a nice warm bed and hot. Ow. What? Kiba yelled as he turned around and saw a pissed off Tenten holding up her fist. Naruto is not a stone cold bastard. He's kind hearted, caring, and warm. Sure, he kills without mercy, but we're ninja. That's a way of life for us. Jeez. Tenten, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you liked him or something. I, I like Naruto kun. Tenten admitted, blushing brightly. Everyone looked shocked, and Hanada looked like she was about to cry. Tenten turned and bowed to Hanada. I'm really sorry, Hanada. I know how you feel about, but I really do like him. I, I, understand. Excuse me. Hanada ran off before she started crying in front of everyone. Shino and Kiba were about to go after her but Kurinai told the two of them to stay put and went after her. There's something else. Naruto jumped out of one of the tunnels and noticed the Konoha Nin packed and ready to leave though Kiba was still unhappy if his grumblings were anything to go by. Good. I see that you're packed I will be going now. Maybe we will see each other again some day. Just as he turned to leave, Team Kakashi and Tenten appeared in front of him. Ma. Ma. Naruto, you don't think you're going on your own did you? Kakashi gave him an eye smile. That is exactly what I'm thinking. Naruto tried to jump over them but was headed off by Sakura then Tenten who was closer got in front of her. The three on them landed with Kakashi and Sasuke walking behind them just in time to hear a growl from Naruto and a softer one from Sakura. Tenten walked up to Naruto and cupped his cheeks and tried to remove his mask but it wouldn't budge so she just leaned in and pecked him on the mouth. We're coming with you Naruto and unless you're going to fight us, there's nothing you can say that will change our mind. Sakura clenched her fist so hard that Sasuke heard the pops and took a couple of steps back while Kurinai had to comfort Hanada who had an air of depression hanging around her. Do as you wish then but don't get in my way. Naruto shunshined away. The small group nodded to the rest before going after Naruto. Let's go. It will take them four to five days to get to Iwa if they travel almost non stop, so we have to make it back to Konoha before they reach Iwa and inform the Hokage. Let's go. The Konoha Nin traveled as fast as they could, much to the delight of Lee and the charging of Kiba. You know, I still don't get why the girls like a cold, dark, and broody bastard like Naruto. Kiba grumbled. I do believe it's a girl thing. Shino offered. Or more precisely a fangirl thing if you remember the females who were after the Uchiha back when we were in the academy. True but the girls aren't fangirls anymore. Hey Shino you think if I started acting all dark and broody that I'd be more popular with the girls? Shino wisely chose not to comment and instead sped up away from Kiba. Oi. Oi. Shino. Naruto moved through the trees without a thought for the other ninjas keeping up with him. It was well after sunset when they arrived at the town Naruto spoke of. They got three rooms, one for Naruto, one for the girls and another for the guys at an inn. At dinner, Naruto opted for room service to avoid the others though Sakura and Tenten did knock on his door every so often, much to his annoyance. 
The Konoha Nin took turns keeping watch, not only for possible attackers but also to make sure Naruto did not leave without them. The rest of their journey was spent in tents as there was only one more village less than a day from Iwa in the direction they were heading. At the border, they had to wait for a border patrol to leave the area before they could move on. At night, they camped out where they could and were hidden and Naruto would send some drones to set up a perimeter around them. Tenten and Sakura spent whatever time they could spare trying to talk to Naruto and getting him to open up. Tenten having more success than Sakura, much to the medic's charging. They arrived at the last village before they reached Iwa which was less than a day away. After picking up some additional supplies and weapons from the local blacksmith, they had dinner before heading to the inn. Three rooms. One for me, one for the girls and one for the two guys. Naruto reached for a scroll but Tenten pushed past him. Actually, I'd like to room with him, she pointed to Naruto. Nobody knew what he was thinking because of his mask. Tenten. You can't sleep in the same room as a guy alone, Sakura screamed. Why not? Tenten wrapped her arms around Naruto's neck and gave an innocent look. Kakashi and Sasuke stepped away from Sakura as they could practically see and hear the steam coming out of her ears. It's, it's indecent. Naruto won't do anything against my will. Won't you Naruto-kun? Leave me out of this. Fine. Then I'm staying with you too as well. Why? To keep you two out of trouble. Sakura reached over and grabbed the keys being held up by the receptionist and tossed one to Sasuke before walking off. While there were two single beds in Kakashi and Sasuke's room, there was only one queen-sized bed in the other. After some discussion, it was decided that the girls will get the bed and Naruto the couch. He was going to protest or walk out to get another room but Kayubi warned him against it for the sake of his health and the mission tomorrow. So he took a sit at the table and started to think about tomorrow especially the targets he would have to hit first like the garrisons and guard posts closest to the start point of the assault. Tenten was laying on the bed reading a magazine and Sakura was taking a shower. Naruto closed his eyes and leaned his head back. Welcome to my parlor, said the spider to the fly. He thought with a dark smile as he pushed a few buttons on his left gauntlet. Hive. Moonlight filled the corridor as a trapdoor to the surface was picked open and the trap disarmed. Six figures dropped into the corridor and moved silently down the corridor. The dim light revealed them to be Root Anbu. Danzo had gotten word of Naruto and having strange and deadly creatures at his disposal. Having acquired a map of the hive from Tsunade's office, Danzo wanted the creature to be captured for him to train and use or to be destroyed so that even if Naruto decided to help Tsunade he wouldn't be of much help. He, Naruto, was a fool so Danzo did not consider him much of a threat but the creatures could be another story. The queen looked up and, smiled, like the predator she was, a spider waiting for its prey to enter its web. The root Anbu fearlessly entered the room, the door slide closed behind them, not that it concerned them. They drew their swords while one drew a pair of kanais with exploding tags and threw them at the queen. Just as the kanais were sent flying, a Praetorian dropped from the ceiling and took the hits to the top of the head detonating them. The fire and smoke cleared revealing the Praetorian was completely unharmed except for the smoke raising from the top of its head crest which was smaller than the queen's, it was taller than a warrior just slightly shorter than the Praetalian. Its body was also leaner than a warrior's and it stood upright. The Praetorian suddenly disappeared from sight and reappeared in front of the closest Anbu, driving its clawed hand through his stomach, his last thought was how fast the Praetorian moved. The guard swung its tail at another root member who blocked the strike with his sword. Some of the other root members jumped back and got into a fighting stance but what the would-be assassins failed to notice or even consider was that there was more than one Praetorian guard in the Queen's chamber. Two of them realized too late as two more Praetorian reared their heads from their hiding place and shot their tongues through the back of their heads. The lone female member of the group quickly went through a couple of hand seals but before she could complete it, she was ripped in half at the waist when a Praetorian grabbed her legs and another grabbed her under her arms and pulled in opposite directions. One of the remaining root Anbu felt something he hadn't felt in a long time and didn't think it was possible, he felt fear. He was so afraid that he turned and ran for the door only to find that it was locked. He was slowly and painfully torn apart by two Praetorians that dropped on top of him. His screams filled the chamber as his blood flowed and his limbs torn from their joints. The lone remaining Anbu rushed forward dodging all the guards and leap up, 
his sword ready to plunge it into the skull of the queen but just as he got close enough the queen's arms shot forward. One grabbed the throat of the Anbu and the other grabbed his arm at the wrist and with a hard twist and pull, snapped the arm and ripped it off at the shoulder. The Anbu was so shocked that he could not even scream. Mercifully the queen ended his suffering with a tongue strike through his mask between the eyes. Naruto opened his eyes and smiled to himself, fools. The queen is never alone and she is far from helpless. Tenten looked up when she heard Naruto give a dark chuckle, Naruto-kun? Nothing Tenten. Just some pests that were taken care of. Naruto closed his eyes to try and keep his mind focused on what he will be doing in just under a day till he felt Tenten press up against his back, hang her arms around his neck and rested her chin on his shoulder. A Ryu for your thoughts? Just thinking about tomorrow. You know, we'll be right there to back you up. I don't want to be associated with Konoha now. Fine. Before Naruto could ask her what she meant, Tenten took off her forehead protector and kept it in her backpack. She walked back to Naruto and straddling his lap and wrapped her arms around his neck as he wrapped his around her waist, then it will be just you and me then. Naruto shook his head slowly, no it will be just me, Kayubi and the angels tomorrow. I don't want you to be in harm's way. Tenten folded her arms across her chest and pouted, Naruto, I'm not some fragile little girl you know. I'm an experienced chunin. True but if I fall, I'm taking Iwagakir with me. What do you mean? Tenten was almost afraid to ask. Naruto held up his left arm, showing her his gauntlet that had a few key pads on it before flipping it open and showing five rectangular screens on the bottom. The predators believed in dying with honor and that meant taking your enemies with you and or not leaving a trace of you behind. This is a self-destruct device. It should be large enough to destroy half a village. Nah, Naruto. Promise me that tomorrow you and the others will just watch and if I fall, run. Run and never look back. Naruto. I can't. You have to. Promise me. Promise me you will do what I say or I will leave you and the others behind. I, I promise. Naruto smiled reassuringly and slowly pulled her towards him. Tenten closed her eyes just as their lips meet. The soft kiss soon turned passionate as Tenten licked his lips asking for permission which he gladly gave. Naruto's hands went to her hip and started to slide them up and under her top. What are you two doing? The pair turned to see a red-faced Sakura dressed in her nightclothes which consisted of a pair of shorts and t-shirt pointing accusingly at them. Naruto could feel a headache coming on but before he could stop himself, what does it look like? We were making out. Sakura looked shocked then went absolutely red, hentai. Tenten leap out of Naruto's lap as Sakura's punch connected to his face. I knew it. She's as violent as before maybe more. Naruto thought as he flew across the room. Kit you still have so much to learn. Naruto could feel Kayubi shake his head while Tenten and Sakura continued to argue about what they were doing. Next door Kakashi and Sasuke sat on their respective beds, Kakashi's nose in a familiar orange book but both listening to the noises from the next room. Kiba's going to throw a hissy fit when he hears about the three of them sharing a room. Aha! Came Kakashi's lazy reply. You got the previous issue? Yup. Kakashi reached into his pouch and pulled out another orange book and handed it to Sasuke, who assumed a similar reading posture as Kakashi, both giggling every so often. Naruto put his mask and cloak on before walking out the door, he decided to get an early start and hopefully leave the others behind but when he walked out into the hallway, he saw the others, he looked back into the room and noticed that the figures that were in the bed earlier had disappeared. HN. Clones. You weren't planning to leave without us were you, Naruto-kun? Sakura asked. That was exactly what I was thinking, he answered as he walked past them. HN. There he goes with that attitude again. Naruto. We're a team and you're not going alone. Naruto stopped in his track and answered without turning around. We have not been a team for years Sakura. And even if we were back then we sure as hell aren't now. Sakura felt like she was going to cry which Sasuke noticed and placed a comforting and supporting hand on her shoulder. I know and I'm trying to make up for it. Naruto continued to walk away till Kakashi appeared in front of him. Do not get in my way Hitaki. Kakashi winced at his tone and addressing him by his family name, I'm not going to fight you and I'm definitely not going to stop you. But like I told you when we left the hive, we're going with you to observe and if necessary back you up. That's right Dobi. 
You may not think of us as a team but you're still part of Team 7 or Team Kakashi as we're called now. So we're coming whether you like it or not. Do as you wish but I won't be taken alive. You better fill them in Tenten. Hi. Iwagakure. The rocky mountain ranges that surround the village and country provide a natural stronghold so it was only natural that some of its ninja were a little too relaxed for their own good while out on patrol even during a time of war just like the squad of Chunin that were currently patrolling the western side of the range that overlooked the village. Just as a shinobi finished relieving himself and pulled his pants back up, a wire looped around his neck and pulled him up a few feet. Yo. Kenshi. Hurry up. The Iwa Shinobi and Kunoichi turned towards the direction their teammate walked off to when they heard a twig snap. Naruto rushed forward covering the Shinobi's mouth with his left hand and stabbed him with his right wrist blades. The Kunoichi drew a kanai and was about to attack Naruto when Tenten appeared and knocked the kanai out of her hand with a pair of tanfa and followed through with a few well-placed strikes knocking her out. Good. Summon a drone to take her back to the hive. Tenten was hesitant. She knew what awaited the woman if she was brought back to the hive. Tenten bit her thumb and summoned a warrior and shakingly pointed to the unconscious women, Ta, take her back to, to the hive. The warrior did as instructed and disappeared in a puff of smoke before she fell to her knees. Naruto walks up to her and placed his hands on her shoulder. It gets easier with time. I don't know if I want it to get easier. It makes me felt like I've lost my humanity if I did. I understand. I really do but we are ninja. That career choice always involves death even more so when we have to maintain the hive. Thanks. She got to her feet and gave Naruto a look of concern. Naruto please. Won't you reconsider letting me back you up? No now go and hide with the others and remember your promise. Tenten nodded and gave him a quick kiss on the lips. Besides if I die you'll be in charge of the hive, more or less. He joked and chuckled at her shocked expression before pushing her towards the direction of the others who were observing at the edge of the tree line overlooking a cliff. Naruto stood on the edge of the cliff. It was a short drop to the bottom, nothing he or his angels could not survive. You ready Kit? As ready as I'll ever be. Good then let the slaughter begin. Biwahaha. Aren't you getting just a little too excited? Hey cut me some slack. I'm a demon and it's the first time we'll be involved in a battle of this magnitude fine. Naruto's pupils became slits and a red chakra cloak started to surround him as drew on the fox's chakra. Cage Bushin no Jutsu. Sixteen shadow clones with slit eyes sans the chakra cloak appeared and paired off with one creating a Rasengan and the other applied elemental manipulation. Off in the distance, the Konoha Nin were watching what was happening with apprehension. They didn't know if Naruto was really that strong or that stupid to take on a major hidden village on his own. Maybe he was both. Kakashi had his Hatai ITE up and held up a video camera. Is he going to use that new wind technique of his? Tenten wondered. It would be a smart move. A few of those in the right places can severely cripple a village's defenses. Sasuke offered. Yes but the screech from just one of those things is enough to give him away plus if you think about it as powerful as that move was, it's not exactly a blockbuster. Sakura countered. I don't think he's using that move. Look. Kakashi pointed. Instead of glowing brightly and giving off a loud screech, the Rasengans in the clone's hands started to condense and darken and gave off a soft deep hum. Just as the Rasengan shrunk to the size of a golf ball and turned completely black, a translucent sphere, shell expended from the core to the size of a regular Rasengan as well as four balls of light moving within the shell around the core like electrons around an atom. Dark style. Rasenshink Yu Yu. The clones yelled and threw the black sphere at their intended targets which flew like little black comets. Instead of exploding on impact, the moment they hit their target, everything around them started to get crash and crumble before being sucked into it like a mini black hole. As the black holes sucked in more matter including people, they grew larger till they were at least 20 meters across but their damage range was far greater. As the voids grew smaller and then disappeared, the only thing left in their wake was barren land and clean empty carters at ground zero. Naruto dismissed all but five of the clones and cut both his palms. The clones wiped some blood on their thumbs and jumped back, together all the Narutos ran through the necessary hand seals and slammed their palms on the ground. In seconds a giant cloud covered the area and quickly cleared. As the giant cloud cleared, there around the Narutos were hundreds of drones. You all know what to do. Go. 
Leading the charge, Naruto's clones and the drones ran down the sides of the cliff like a black waterfall and ran through the village spreading out across the hidden rock village with the real Naruto heading up the rear. Naruto fired two dual-pronged darts from his right gauntlet that sent their targets flying back into a wall. The darts however did not stop till they flew through their targets and embedded themselves in the brick wall. Tuiwa Chunin attacked Naruto who ducked the first punch aimed at his head but got caught in the stomach by the other but Naruto was able to slash both Chunins with his wrist blade before getting a double kick from the Chunin. Naruto disappeared in a puff of smoke as he hit the ground. Shadow Clone. The Chunins did not have time to think as a couple of drones dropped on them from above and two of them disappeared with a pair of Chunins. What the hell are those things? An Iwakunoichi asked. Who cares? Just stop them, yelled her teammate. Demonic illusion. Hell viewing jutsu. The Iwakunoichi cast the genjutsu at the pack of charging Xenos, her teammates ready to strike when the summons froze in fear but to their horror and shock they did not stop and were soon overrun. Naruto tossed one of his clones a bluish silver ball and ran off as a two teams of genin and their instructors approached. The clone threw the ball at a group of approaching Iwa Nin and disappeared in a puff of smoke as the ball hit the ground and gave off a loud high-pitched screech that knocked out and paralyzed the Nin, allowing drones to move in and capture them. Naruto drew a glaive and rushed towards a group of four Iwa Nin, he ducked under a kanai slash, aimed for his head and with a back sweep, cut the man's left leg off at the thigh. In a swift motion, he followed through with an up swing and cut off the Kunoichi's arm. Moving past the Kunoichi, he went low, trying to take out the legs of a shinobi who jumped over him avoiding the attack. A shadow clone of Naruto rolled behind him and slashed the shinobi in midair. Ninja art. Poison gas. A purple cloud blew from the Kunoichi's mouth and covered Naruto. But the next thing she knew she was caught in a metal net that kept getting tighter and tighter. Naruto walked out of the poison cloud and looked at the struggling woman. Sorry poison hardly affects me. As Naruto walked off, a man with an Iwa Hatai ITE and Junin vest appeared. My name is Kenji Mikado, Iwa's Wolverine. What the hell is a Wolverine? A fierce and dangerous creature that should not be underestimated. Sounds just like me. Naruto and Kenji rushed forward but just as they were close enough to hit each other, two of Naruto's shadow clones appeared in front of him and started to punch and kick the Junin before one rolled behind him and kicked him in the back while the one in front kicked him up and the real Naruto flipped above him and kicked him into the ground. Naruto walked over to the crater and as the dust settled, he saw the body of the Junin turn to mud. Shit. Bushin. Naruto took two punches to the stomach and a roundhouse kick to the head which sent him through the door of a house. As Kenji got closer to the door, Naruto blew a hole in the wall with his plasma caster and walked out firing. Kenji dodged most of the plasma bolts and threw some kanai to intercept the rest. Naruto created a shadow clone and transformed himself into a demon windmill shuriken and was thrown at the elite Junin who blocked the shuriken with a kanai but was thrown back by a Rasengan from Naruto as he changed back. Demonic Illusion. Double Falls Surroundings Jutsu. Kenji called out and charged forward as the genjutsu took effect and Naruto looked around almost confused. Got you. Just as Kenji was within striking distance, Naruto ducked the kanai aimed for his head and connected to the side of his attacker's head with a heel kick. How? Sorry genjutsus don't affect me. Who the hell are you? Wouldn't you like to know? Kenji jumped up fully intending to take Naruto's head off with a kick but had to dodge a near point blank plasma bolt aimed at his head and retaliated with a reverse elbow which broke the plasma caster. Naruto tried to hit the Wolverine with a couple of darts but had to block a kunai with his wrist blade after his attempt. Taking advantage of Naruto pushing him back, Kenji connected with a kick to Naruto's head. Earth Style. Earth Flow River. Naruto tried to regain his balance but found it nearly impossible on the soft muddy ground. Earth style. Earth dragon bomb. Shit. Naruto was hit hard by the mud flow and clashed through the walls of a building before it collapsed from the damage caused by Naruto and the jutsu. Kenji didn't waste any time, shooting forward as he threw a punch. Naruto stood up just in time for the fist to connect with his face and countered with one of his own. Kenji blocked it and attempted a roundhouse kick to the blonde's face which connected. You fight very well and I still haven't gotten your name. Naruto pulled off his mask and spat out some blood, Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki. 
The young hunter ducked beneath another kick and sent a swift uppercut to the man's stomach. Grimacing in pain, Kenji stumbled back a few feet, reaching into his pouch, grabbing three kanai in each hand and threw them at Naruto. Using his wrist blades, he parried even cut in half some of the thrown projectiles, before launching a net at Kenji. He shunshined behind Naruto and launched a stone spike from the ground into his chest. Lucky for Naruto his armor was harder than the stone causing the stone tip to break but it still left a noticeable dent in his armor and threw him back. Kenji grabbed an oil lump and lit it with some rubble that was ablaze and threw it at Naruto who brought his cloak up to protect his face. He tore his burning cloak off and threw a plasma mine. Kenji avoided the blast and threw three explosive kanai at Naruto who managed to avoid them. Wind style. Great breakthrough. Naruto rushed forward just behind the wind front and with a flying kick sent the Junin who was bracing himself against the wind and sent him crashing into the side of a building. Breathing heavily, Naruto approached the downed Junin who was starting to get to his feet. You are definitely a worthy opponent Uzumaki-san. As are you Mikado-san, it's been a long time since anyone's given me this much a challenge. But this battle is mine. I doubt you have that much chakra left and your injuries are worse than mine. I still have a trick or two left. Naruto answered as he spat out more blood. I highly doubt that. To Ju Cage Bushin no Jutsu. A hundred shadow clones appeared around Naruto and charged the surprised Junin. Kenji managed to fend off the first few dozen clones but was brought down and overwhelmed when a dart flew through the clones hit his thigh. After the beat down, most of the clones disappeared leaving three to hold onto the beat Iwa Junin. As a bleeding and panting Naruto approached, he created a katana with his dark energy. You, truly are a great ninja but underestimating me was your downfall. Naruto complimented as he drove his sword through the man's heart and leaned close to his ear, and I am also the son of the fourth Hokage. Dismissing the clones, Naruto pulls his sword out in a down and out motion, slicing Kenji's heart and chest open. The dark sword dissolved into nothing as Naruto stood over the corpse of the dead Junin his face still showing the shock he felt as Naruto died and removed his Hatai ITE. Using his right wrist blade, Naruto cut away the dead man's vest and shirt before cutting into the flesh and bone of his back and reached in and pulled out his spine and skull, letting out an inhuman roar as he held up his new prize. Hanging the skull on his back, Naruto moved towards the Suchikage Tower, he had to end this now, he won't last another fight with a Junin level opponent but thankfully his drones were keeping most of the shinobi busy. Naruto stopped less than a hundred meters from the walls that surrounded the cage tower and cut both his palms, ran through the necessary hand seals and slammed both palms on the ground to his sides, a cloud spread across in the area, covering some of the building obscuring everything from view. After a few moments, the cloud cleared and there around Naruto, next to him and on the building were hundreds upon hundreds of drone reinforcements. Attack the Konoha Nin watched in awe and fear at the death and destruction that Naruto was reaping, knowing that this could easily be the fate of the Hidden Leaf Village if Naruto decided to turn against them. Kami-sama, they watched as hundreds of drones scaled the outer walls of the Suchikage Tower like a black tidal wave of death, killing and capturing every living thing that stood in their way. A few Iwa Anbu appeared on the top balcony and managed to hold of the wave for mere seconds before they were outflanked and overwhelmed. But just as the first few Xenos entered the balcony, it was engulfed in flames as a loud explosion was heard throughout the village. All the angels stopped moving and stared at the destroyed tower for a moment before letting out high pitched scream, which to the survivors and the observers sounded like a victory roar. Kakashi lowered his camera as he and the others watched as the angels slowly walked through and spread out through the streets. Most of the ninjas and villagers had lost all hope when the tower was destroyed and just surrendered. Some of the ninjas even took their own lives. Those that did not fight back and surrendered were left alone but there were still a large number of ninjas and even some villagers who were ready to fight to the death and death was what they got one way or another. To be continued. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.